Hi, this is Kirsten with No Pants Profits, and I'm here on the Celebrity Reflection. I better go find Richard. Oh, look, here he is. Oh no, we have to, I'm in the position I have to play the game. Is he sleeping or is he dead? Oh, oh, just sleeping, just sleeping. Hey! Does, does that mean I won or I lost? Uh, I mean, it really just depends. I'm just a little beer drunk from my Sapporo. Uh. But um, this is, I think, I think Kirsten might have told you who she was already. Have a seat for a second, Kirsten. I can take my camera. This is a, no, come over here. This is a Richard and Kirsten from No Pants Profits from the Celebrity Reflection. And I'm just going to sum this up in the first minute. Um, we were playing Sleeping or Dead on a couch that I've lost the game on two times. Yeah, I mean, I found two dead people on this exact couch. That's, That's pretty dark. That's just what every woman is dying to hear. I know it is, but here's the thing. We're on the Celebrity Reflection, and this is our review of the Celebrity Reflection. I was last on this ship in March. I will tell you, when I was on this ship in March, it was more of a spring break crowd. Now it is more of a God's waiting room crowd. And I think what's interesting, and we're going to go through the whole ship and everything, is that I'm going to be a little more somber in this review than normal, even though I've got all the Spider-Men pointing at each other, because celebrities trying to attract a new, uh, new, younger clientele, and you can see them here and there, can't you? Mm -hmm. But they're also trying to not piss off their existing clientele, so they're angering the younger people in order to not piss off the existing clientele. And I think that's the main theme of this review. So let's go ahead. Come on up, and we are going to uh, do a ship tour. Yay. We're doing it live, we're doing it in real time, and we are uh, actually going to, we're on deck three, right by the, the, the death couch. I do call it the death couch, because this is, I found two dead people on this couch before. Hey, look, drunk on a cruise ship, dead on a sofa. It's harder to get rid of the body, but you know. Uh, oh, I, I don't know who that is. I don't want to hear that. Uh, I think that's the start of the funeral, right, Kirsten? Maybe. <laughs> it, it might not be a terrible way to go, but uh, this ship is dated, old, and kind of stagnated from when it was built. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a whole ship tour. It is day number seven for us on board the Celebrity Reflection. This is Kirsten's first ever celebrity cruise, correct? Right. Uh, Kirsten's favorite cruise line is Norwegian. We just want to be very clear. And MSC is a close second. Um, my favorite is Carnival, believe it or not, with MSC is a close second. So uh, MSC may just win soon, but what we're doing is we're walking across deck three because Kirsten does not like heights. Right, they give me the heebie-jeebies. The heebie-jeebies. Uh, I think that was like a band in the 70s. I'm sure all the old people on board would like the heebie-jeebies, um, but we're going to start up high. We're not going to start really get on the ship or anything. We're going to start up high. We are going to start on the pool deck. Now, this is something that Kirsten has observed over the last few days a lot more than I have. Kirsten, every morning, you get up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy, and you go outside, and what do you see? I see a lot of people around the pool because it is warm here, but because it's November, a lot of people are experiencing snow and coldness at home, so it is packing the pool area. But I was going even more specifically. Don't you see crap on all the loungers and the people not in the loungers? There, there is a lot of that too. There's so, not available chairs. Yeah, and I think it's interesting compared to the paradise that I was on, uh, 14, that I was on uh, like a week ago, compared to the paradise, it's very hard to find a seat by the pool. So we're going to do deck 14 and deck 15 first because we're in the middle of the day on a sea day. So come over here, yeah. So we're in the middle of the day on a sea day. So we're going to do deck, we're, we're facing us. Huh? We're going to do deck 14 and 15 first. Uh, we just walked it a couple minutes ago just to kind of check out and make sure there's nothing crazy going on. And I did not see an empty chair, did you? No. I mean, but I saw a lot of empty chairs, let's be honest. I didn't see an empty chair without people's junk on it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the reality behind it but um you've got up on these decks you've got a couple places to eat we're going to talk about that we are in what i consider kind of a food desert time right now we're about two o'clock 2 15. there's nothing really in the ocean view cafe the pizza's not great here do you agree i haven't had any it didn't look great 
this is not great. Um, the burgers and, and hot dogs, uh, I think. Uh, not as good as guys. Not as good as guys. Uh, does Norwegian have a good burger hot dog place? or? You know, I typically don't eat hamburgers on Norwegian. Okay. You, you turned me on to the hamburgers with guys on Carnival. <coughs> really? Yes. <coughs> Interesting. Oh, sorry. My Sapporo went down the horn pipe. Hopefully I'm not on the death sofa. Uh, later. Uh, just saying. Uh, but we are riding up to the pool deck. Now on this ship it is different. The pool deck is functionally... I'm just putting my other strap on. On. Uh, You're putting on this ship, on? yeah, I'm putting my strap on. Uh, on this ship, the pool deck is no larger. There is no more seating or anything like that. But there are actually a couple hundred extra cabins on this ship than on all the other Solstice class ships, because they moved everything up a deck. And really, there's almost nothing that they did on this is the Celebrity Reflection. Almost nothing they did to make the public areas any larger on this ship. I think that's an important factor when we're looking at these variables right now. So we're on deck 14. This is the pool deck. I'll put Kirsten on my left. Uh, and we're looking for available pool chairs. <laughs> mm. The Caprese salad is really good right here. Oh, this is still open at 219? This is where they make the really healthy smoothies, which are included on the, the premium, beverage, premium package. beverage package. The premium beverage package, you can actually get the really healthy smoothies if you want. You got the caprese salad. That's my favorite. So this is all and actually included. It's not part of blue or anything like that. It's called the Aqua Spa Cafe. Now, on every other solstice class ship, meaning ship of this kind, it's right outside of the spa. The problem is on this ship, the spa is on a uh, different deck because I told you they kind of raised everything up, but didn't really. They discombobulated it. They discombobulated it. Now we are in the shade, and in the shade right here, you can see we've got we got some chairs in the shade. Yep. In the shade, we have some chairs, but I don't think we're going to have those chairs available in the sun, do you? Nope. And that's because, look, hey, it's, it's November. Uh, I live in Miami. Kirsten lives in Tampa. Uh, I think there's a very different weather in Miami and Tampa than there is in New York or different places like that. But, I mean, you can see we're at the pool deck right now. Thank you. Thank you. We're at the pool deck right now. Hey, look, it's a big pool. I got to give it credit. Better than Virgin. But uh, finding a spot anywhere in the sun is nearly an impossible task. I'm just trying to kind of show you there, uh, literally finding a spot in the sun. Now, I will tell you, Kirsten, there is a very, very easy access to bars. Look, they even have like a whole bar set up right here. You know what you got to do to me, right? I'm going to go inside. You want to be? You no, no, I'm ready. I'm just going people. inside. Yes. I'm going, no, you get it. You get it. I, I got to get my, uh, my thing is in your oh. bag. Here, just use mine. I'd like to give cutie awards oh. to Luca. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I gotta, no, just, no, come on. Hi, can I get a Bud Light, please? Unfortunately. Kirsten. Uh, the reason I had to get out of there is actually for copywritten music. Uh, I wasn't Seven trying to get four. away from Kirsten or anything like that. Honestly, I'm not sure I can use any of this right now. So I'll be back with you in a minute. Hey, I, I didn't mean to put Kirsten down or anything there. That was just way too much copywritten music all at once. Kirsten was getting me this uh, drink of sorts, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to drink this drip. No, I don't know. Uh -huh. Kristen was getting me this drink of sorts, I guess. Let me finish my Sapporo first. Uh, but there's copywritten music out by the pool. And then she, I realized I was away from the copywritten music and she went to the copywritten music and it was just like... Yes, I'm, I'm just to copywritten music like a moth to a lamp. <laughs> when you ever want to make money on YouTube, you're like, no, no, I can take 20 seconds and that's it. I finished the good beer. Now what do I have to drink? Bud Light. Bud Light. Okay. So let's go into the Ocean View Cafe. I believe uh, we were talking about food options uh, before we got distracted by beer. And we were also talking about, I showed how hard it is to get a uh, chair on the pool deck. Uh, but we're going into their buffet. Now let's be clear. It's a cruise ship buffet. It's a Lido buffet. Nothing more, nothing less. Every cruise ship has them. Carnival Celebration, Mardi Gras, and soon to be Jubilee have the best of them. Uh, that is not an opinion, that is a fact. I mean, you, you can call it an opinion if you want, but it's my opinion, so I believe it's a fact. Uh, so, 
we're going to move away from copyrighted music as quick as we can. So this is the Ocean View Cafe. They are about ready. Sorry, Kirsten. Doing a little dance to get you. Okay. That's as much dancing as I can do. Um, they are still serving the buffet, I think, till 2.30. So this might not be as much of a food jungle as I thought it would be. Uh, what we got? Prime rib, horseradish. I'm gonna grab a beer too. Kirsten's gonna grab a beer too. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we got all uh, oh, this. This is where their pizza, pasta, stuff like that are. Now, I don't know. I don't know what's the fact that I got so used to this food over the years, no. um, which it very well could be. You. And you're probably hearing Kirsten order a beer at the same the time. Strike, please. Um, maybe I got so used to the food over the years. I don't find this food very good. Um, don't know why. I'm just not one that finds it very good. I find the food rather bland and nursing home in nature. You got my card still. It's my opinion. Uh, when Kirsten comes back, I mean, it looks pretty. Look at these cakes. They look, they look very, very pretty. Thank you. We've got, you know, some meat and stuff like this. Remember that all your meat on a cruise ship is actually frozen. So uh, it is frozen. So. You know, you could say it loses freshness and stuff like that. You can see they've got beef skewers, chicken skewers. They have a nice selection, even like ooh, ham and cheese, arancini. So oh, Kirsten got a red stripe, even though we went out in Jamaica for what? About four minutes? Yes. Well, four to six minutes. Kirsten, I was telling people something, and it, it might be hard because I ate this food for years. Mm -hmm. I found this food to be incredibly bland up here. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Am I wrong? Um, it, uh... Look, there's a whole Caprice station, Kirsten. I think it was fine. Like, it was a little bland, but it was fine. I, I liked the food. And I really like, in the morning, the juice choices. There's a wide array of juice choices. They have, like, pineapple... That are included? Yes. Um, are they prune, in the machines? Are they juice? Around on no, they're in little carafes Wait. where you can pour them Wait, yourself. Kirsten, Kirsten, you realize you just said there's prune juice here. Mm-hmm. You know who drinks prune juice? I did. Old I mean, people. Hey, Kirsten, you're almost 40. You're 39. I'm rounding up. You know what happens when you get to 41? I'm 80. You're 80. I don't understand prune juice. I don't like prune, ju prune juice it's or anything thick. like that. It's, it's kind of girthy. It's thick and girthy. Um, that's the buffet. I like this uh, red stripe. Oh. Is that why red stripes are so thick? trying to remind you of the people of Jamaica? What? People of Jamaica are fine people and that is all I know about them. Yeah, man. It's Ari. It's Ari. Um, so... I also really like the orange butter at breakfast to go with my French toast. I have never had orange butter before and it was delicious. My favorite butter is truffle butter. Mm, that's good too. Internet. Do me a favor, Internet. Don't tell Kirsten in the comments what truffle butter is. Is it not truffle oil with butter? No. 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 This is okay. not truffle oil with butter. Okay. But let's go out. We walked across 14. We do have to go to the Sky Lounge and stuff like that. But during this cruise we did, stop for two seconds, there's no one behind us. We did four drinking challenges, didn't we? Yes. And what was the first one that we did? Sunset Bar. I really like the Sunset Bar. Me too. So let's show you the Sunset Bar. This is actually a slightly different design Sunset Bar than the other Solstice class ships. Uh, I guess I will take back my statement. Uh, they did make this a little bit bigger uh, than the other Solstice class ships. So I do have to give them the fact that they made it a little, just a slight bit bigger. But this is the Sunset Bar. Make sure your hat's on good, yeah, Kirsten. Yeah, I'm gonna hold my hat. It is all the way at the back of the boat. The nice thing is, I think, yeah, we can get all the way to the front of the boat, too. But yeah, this is all the way to the back of the boat. They've got some balconies back here, everything like that. I don't know who that is in the distance. But what was the best drink we had here? Do you remember? So we did every single drink on the menu here. 
Because yeah, what, what am I, remember. Kristen? That was like 8,000 drinks ago. Okay. The best drink that we had here on their actual unique drink menu was the Marmalade Smash. Ah. Oh, you remember that one? Yes. The orange one? Yes. Do you want to go grab one of those? A Marmalade Smash. Kristen's going to grab a Marmalade Smash. I'm going to hang out looking at the back of the boat, and we'll be back with you in just a moment's time. All right, so we are back here at the Sunset Bar. We spent a lot of time here, didn't we? Yes. Like two hours straight. I didn't... That was a straight video, wasn't it? Uh-huh. I didn't stop it at all. Yep, and my, my hair was blowing in the wind as it is now. And, I thought that was... I thought the that's sunset. the pretty... That was the prettiest drinking video I've ever made. The sunset uh, was setting behind us. And and this bar... I think only... I think the martini bar we did fail at. We, we like, missed two drinks at the end. You've still never had the snowflake martini, have you? I guess not. We're going to have to fix that at the end of this tour. Like, we'll end in the martini bar. Um, but we did, we drank every drink on the menu here. Definitely, you could check out the video. It's drinking every drink on the menu at the Sunset Bar on Celebrity Reflection. And we determined the best one was like the butter you like. Orange. Yeah, not truffle. Uh, I didn't tell her what that was yet. Next commercial break, I will. Uh, but let's just make sure this holds up because we were, we were a little drunk when we had this one. This is the orange, what was this called? Marmalade Smash, right? Isn't that what I don't get drunk, I get toasty. Yeah, no, 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 that's, did you taste it yet? That's still probably the best drink on this ship. It's a good one. Would you give it, I mean, we're gonna revisit, here's, here's what's cool, over this tour that we're gonna do, we're gonna revisit what we thought the best drink was in each of these bars to make sure we were right. Okay. You think that's fair? Sure. Just, oh, I'm not redoing the whole menu again. My liver is like, no, I cannot handle that. Uh, but we got our marmalade smash. It is in a very nice, you can pick that up and show that to everyone, I have no hand, a very nice pool safe glass. Cause we are on the outside pool deck. So the last thing you need is glass in your feet. Um, my gender fluid is almost empty. The light's blinking. Your Bud Light? Oh, yes. It's gender fluid. So you know what that means? What? That means it's time to get a Lawn Club Grill Spike Lemonade. Oh, geez. Do you, do you want to tell people about that? So we went to Lawn Club Grill. Let's move, because we're, we're right by Lawn Club Grill. And we ordered the Lawn Club Grill Spiked Lemonade because Richard has told me all about it, that it's his favorite drink, he loves it. And I'm like, great, I like lemonade. So we order that and they bring us out mojitos. How did you so, know it was mojito? Because it's got mint ground up into and it. Lime. And it looks like a mojito and has a lime around the rim. So we said to them, hey, this is a mojito. And they said, oh, I'm so sorry. And we we'll said, get you another. we would like the spiked lemonade, please. And they said, yes, coming right up. And then they brought us more mojitos. And uh, you were saying when we were up here earlier, oh, oh trust me, we'll get, we'll get to long come in a minute. You said this is the uh, first like real putting green you've seen on real grass. Yes. So if you are a golf fan, I do think it's funny that Norwegian on their newer ships, I know Kirsten, I know you're not a newer ship person. Am I right? Like, I, I mean, I, I love any cruise, any ship. No, no, but what I mean by is that when you price cruises, unless you're coming mm -hmm. along on a casino cruise or something, this was, in, in all, all honesty, a comp cruise for me via the casino. And we will get to the casino later. But Kirsten, you don't normally go, when you're, you don't go on the newest ships because the newest ships command a major premium. Yeah. Did you know that on the newer ships, I'm not kidding you here, Norwegian charges you to play mini golf on their ships? Hmm. They charge you money to play mini golf on their ships. They're the only one in the industry that does that. Um, now something else, we, we were talking about Long Club. Long Club's right over here. Uh, we couldn't get our spike lemonade. I didn't think Long Club was great. I think that Long Club was still, we, did, we have a whole thing on it on our first day thing. I think that uh, Long Club is still pretending that uh, COVID is a problem in the cruise ship industry. Uh, one of the things of Long Club that's literally still on the menu is you can cook yourself. Was I able to cook myself? No, but it said it right on the menu. Still. And we have a lot of scenarios where, like we were down at the um, Sushi on Five earlier. And on the app menu, maybe not on the real menu, but on the app menu it said they still had mochi. We went to lunch in the dining room. 
on the dining room menu it said they still had a wine that they haven't had in years mm -hmm. for lunch. So I mean, keeping content, keeping stock up to date and stuff is something that they have trouble with. But you know, out on some of the Norwegian ships, I think most of the Norwegian ships have it now. I know the Disney ships have it. I know the Carnival ships all have it. There's a giant screen that's normally outside. Oh right? yeah. On the pool deck. Yes. But here they don't have it on the pool deck, do they? No. What do they have? The lawn area. So they have a gigantic screen, and for some reason, there's a fascination with one thing on this screen they always show. What is it? Red Bull racing and... Red Bull Flutog and all that. These weird little vehicles that people build going down some crazy course and then wrecking at the end. Do you know why? What does Red Bull give you? Wings. There we go. Uh, so Red Bull gives you wings. Uh, and you've also got these little alcoves that people can rent. Now, Kirsten is a uh, supply and demand to <laughs> fool. No, that's what I'm saying. You know, when, when an alcove's sitting empty, there's like three of these that are sitting empty. What does that generally mean? People don't want to pay for it. it means the price is too high. Yeah. So that's just the... Uh, there's also <laughs> no area to get off of this without walking right past a sign that says don't walk here. Well, that's nice. <laughs> so we're trapped. Yes. I guess, um, hey everyone. Chris, what do we say? Ship tour over? Ship tour over. No. What? Not over. We're just getting started. We're trapped. We're trapped. How do we, how do we escape? We will step Limbo. over the signs. Oh, oh no. Please, Lord, Lord, give me a sign. Oh wait, there it is. It says stay off of me. It's kind of weird how they uh, restrict the grass so much, but there's actually <laughs> two or three little guys from the Philippines that literally their entire job maintain this grass and I understand why this grass needs a rest because they you know they change the grass between Europe and the US oh no yeah yeah, yeah. so we are now on US grass mm. they had to remove the European grass and we're now on American grass why do they do that because uh, it grows different ways you cannot grow the same grass in Europe as you can in the Caribbean huh. it's one of those weird stupid little things uh, but while we're on the subject of it you remember we were on deck 14 and we were uh, looking at all the chairs that were not available in the sun. I mean, just take a look. There's just, mm -hmm. Sorry. and they say, they say they're gonna move these things after a certain period of time and stuff like that. But look, these are all, let's call them what they are. We're not gonna say it too loud. Well, the ones that are in it won't get offended, but there's a lot of chair hogs here, right? Mm -hmm. That are just, uh, they will come at God knows what hour, early in the morning, and they will clip their towel to the chair and stake it for themselves, right? I mean, look, here's another one. And you can only expect the guys that work on the ship, that are, you know, the guys that are the pool attendants and stuff, to do so much. But you will see just out of, out of the chairs we're seeing right now, over 50% of them are claimed with no one in them, right? Am I wrong? I'd say it's about 50-50. Yeah, 50-50 are claimed with towel hooks or towel clamps or books or things with the with no one in them now let's talk about where we went the first day when we came on board Kirsten mass grill yes this is the um, hamburger hot dog uh, fries place so uh, you can get a turkey burger if you want to wait 15 minutes but the uh, hamburger hot dog fries place now I turned you on to guys on the carnival horizon and where did you say this was like, if guys was a 10, this was an eight? Yes, and one thing that was a little bit confusing about this is that there's a separate alcohol line off to the side. Well, beer only. And, yeah, there's and a then, separate beer only line. Okay, and then there's a food line and it's not always clear who's in what line. Remember, everyone on this ship is just in line headed to death. So does it really matter? Everyone in every line is ultimately in a line towards death. I mean, here's another thing that makes me laugh. Kirsten, you've been to McDonald's. What's the one thing that never works in McDonald's? The, um, the McFlurry machine. The ice cream machine. Um, they actually have a working ice cream machine here most of the time. That's impressive because it's out here in 80, 90, 100 degree weather. You know, speaking of weird, uh, weird little death jokes, when I used to work at the Haunted Mansion, sometimes kids would look at me and they would go, am I going to die? And I would say, eventually. Wow. Was that in character? Were you allowed to say yes, that? Yes, yes. 
Well, I don't know if I was allowed, but that's what I said. You know what else too? When I worked at the Grand Floridian, you were not allowed to accept tips unless you refused three times. So someone would be like, here you go. And I would be like, no, 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 you don't need to do that. And then they would be like, I insist. And I'm like, okay. But that was know. only being offered two times. No, no, no. No, no, no. Three refusals. Weird Disney stuff. Oh, you, you just had to say no three times? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So this is the pool deck. There's a pretty nice sized pool deck given the number of people here. And we didn't actually even cover the solarium deck. We'll, we'll talk about that from above in a minute, but there is a whole nother bar over here. This is a liquor bar. So the other one was just a beer bar. This is a liquor bar. I will tell you, I think person knows this. Across the ship, I found that a majority of the bartenders are like brand new. Have you noticed that? There's a couple experienced ones, but a majority of them are having to take a look at a menu hmm. to figure out. I did notice that, that they were reading off menus to make drinks. Like, and they were literally just grabbing the menu. I, you, you might have not had this happen, but I had happened a few times. There are exceptions to that rule. Like that lady from St. Lucia, who just made us this orange marmalade, she makes delicious drinks. I have no complaints. Um, but you know, there's um, people who are literally looking at the menu to figure out the ingredients basic drinks so uh and they're bartenders uh i didn't show you this from uh, inside but i'll show you this from above so this is the uh solarium it's kind of like an air conditioned pool enclosed but no but like this time of year it feels air conditioned doesn't it mm -hmm. like i actually like and can i tell you something funny sure see this is when i tell this so you see this glass here right mm -hmm. there was this cruise we were talking about earlier in the cruise. It was called the Bliss Cruise. Remember you said you don't have the Norwegian Bliss? This, right here, was a sex dungeon. Mm. So what they did, this is where it's relevant, this glass right here, they covered in vinyl so you couldn't look into it. And I had an invite one night. Someone said to me, would you like to see the sex dungeons in action? Person, you know me. You love to see anything, anything in action, any new experience. You're on board. Now, I was working on the ship. I had to sign a piece of paper. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I don't know if I told you this. I had to sign a piece of paper saying, hey, the company that runs this Bliss Cruise, like, you understand that you're a senior manager on the ship, and the company that runs the Bliss Cruise is willing to show you all these things. You cannot take any legal action against Bliss Cruises, celebrity, or anyone for anything you're saying. Sounds like something fun's gonna happen. What I saw that night. Have you ever seen a fuck pile before? A what? Fuck pile. A fuck pile? No. Do you know what a fuck pile is? I guess I'm about to learn. It's a whole bunch of old people with parts inside other parts ew, just jiggling around. Ew. What? Ew. Ew. I saw many sex piles that night. Oh. Speaking of that. Also, we haven't talked about the first cruise of the Celebrity Reflection. So, the inaugural season of the Celebrity Reflection was actually the first time uh, and the only time that I got to go to Israel. But I went to Israel a bunch of times. Uh, but I got to go to Israel. Uh, the Holy Land, uh, Israel, Turkey, everywhere like that. I was there like for my 28th birthday. You were there for your 20th birthday. I was mm -hmm. there at like 26 or so? 27? Um, yeah, it, was, it was 10 years ago, so 26, 27. Uh, I went to Israel. But you know, we, you know what happened on this ship? Before I went to the Holy Land for a whole season? What? We had an all gay male cruise. And they have this deck called the Solstice deck. This is, I'm gonna have to blur if we see it, but I don't think we're gonna see it. This is technically the naked sunbathing deck, but on the gay cruise, this was known as the dick deck. For 22 hours a day, there were guys that didn't wanna take men back to their cabin that would just go at it on this deck. Ew. Now, I'll tell you, there was another thing from the gay I cruise. Mean, I mean, ew, that they're just going at it all day on a deck. But, you know, you, you do you. Yeah, it's the dick deck. Um, but on this cruise, I'm, we're not going to go for the dick deck. Because it looks very, uh, it looks like there could be some topless people up there now. Um, on that same cruise, though, I saw an entertainer. Well, what you don't know is when companies charter these cruises, they are in charge of the entertainment that's on the cruise as well. So they'll say, hey, look, maybe they'll say, 
we want one of your production shows, but we're going to bring on everyone else. I want to tell you who was on this cruise because it's kind of funny. You're going to see one of them tomorrow night because we're going to go see Pan Am. Mm -hmm. Pan Am tomorrow night who dresses like a flight attendant and is an airplane comedian and still one of the... Oh, bring the hat down. One of the... We're not coming up here. Let's just turn around. This is the basketball court. One of the, if not the funniest comedians I've ever seen. But you know who they also had on here? Hmm. The cast of Glee? Hmm. What's on this ship? I've heard of Glee. The TV show where they sing and dance and everything like that. The cast of Glee was on this ship. And I think, I think we're done outside. Um, so we're going to go see Pan Am tomorrow night. Maybe, maybe we'll give you some, I don't know if they're going to let you bring cameras. Maybe we'll give you some clips or some thoughts on Pan Am. And another video coming up on the channel. Trust me, you know what I don't say? I don't say like and subscribe. I hate that. But, you know, if you might want to see Pan Am, just stay tuned, I guess is the right word. Uh, so we're going back inside. Oh, we're going inside. And we should be inside on deck 15. Believe it or not, what do they actually have on celebrity ships? Believe it or not, it, it's a... Uh, what's this? Oh, wait. It's a kids program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you think they'd have to have... Have you seen any kids so far on this tour? I heard... No, no, this tour. This tour? No. I heard there's like 12 kids on board. Yeah. One of my absolute favorite uh, moments, though, from this cruise, first night of the cruise, I'm on board. There's a bunch of drunk people with me in the elevator. And they were like, they were gone. All right. Uh, I didn't... I was not gone until the third night. A uh, bunch of drunk people with me in the elevator. They were gone. And do you know where they wanted to go? That's they want to go to the nightclub. They wanted to go to the nightclub. A celebrity has a major problem because they call the teen program the nightclub. The X Club. Well, oh yeah, that's sorry. They call the teen program the X Club. And what does everybody think the X Club is? Something sexy. Something sexy. That'd be great. First titty bar at sea. I'm down for that. You like strip clubs, Kirsten? Not really. Oh, I don't either. You know why? Because you can look, but you can't really touch. Uh, just saying. Um, so I want to take us now to the real nightclub. Um, this is the nightclub. It's not really meant to be a nightclub. It's a bar, and it's a bar that we actually did uh, another drinking challenge at. Who would have thunk it? Um, called the Sky Lounge. With It used to have two Ys. has the very loud guy doing trivia. I'm the louder loud guy, so I will win here. Uh, so this is called the Sky Observation Lounge, and we did all 12 of their, uh, what, is, what is that thing called, astrology-themed drinks here the other day. Do you remember which one was the best? Pisces? I don't know, I'm going to look it up right now. No, yeah, the, oh yeah, that was <laughs> the, the, the one ingredient one. drink, the one ingredient the drink that literally had Bailey's and whipped cream. Yeah. So, um... I think we have to confirm that, don't we? Yes. So we're going to go in. I'm, I'll show you this a little bit. Uh, it's very loud here. So they're talking about male figures. So you'll see it. This is kind of an inside. Uh, not alcoholic drink. Not alcoholic drinks. Cold drink, hot drink, as long as it's not alcoholic. Okay? We're going to start from Robbie and we go one by one. All right. So and we'll see we what we've got this uh, little have, area. Until I have only this is the nightclub. It's open very around. late. Okay. Robbie, that comes from you. <laughs> Shit, Kirsten saw that, didn't see. she? Kirsten, Kirsten, what did you just see? Water. We saw a sleeping Planet. or dead candidate. Apple Contestant. Apple Contestant. It's a game Apple show. Apple we saw Apple. two. It was a couple. Okay, very good. They could have shared a plot. I Earth just March. saw the woman. Oh, Great no. The husband was gone, too. But we got our buddy. We got our buddy here. He's he's he's, a, he's one of my two one of my two favorite bartenders. We saw your comrade. What's the one we want? A Pisces? The, the one with the Bailey's in it. Pisces, right? Two. Yeah. So we're gonna get two Pisces, and we'll be back with you in just a moment. Two Pisces. See you in a minute. 
All right, so it took us a while to get because honestly, okay. nobody ever orders these drinks here. You notice that, right? The fact that you're it's like when we came and we ordered all 12 here the other day, yeah, they had to like to gather the ingredients. Um, it's not a bad thing against them, really. Yeah. Like in the in the Sunset Bar, they had to like gather all the ingredients to make it because no one orders this. They order the simpler stuff. But I want to go for the unique things. So what do we get? Talk loud. The Pisces? No, I think it's the Aries. Really? Pisces, you're right. I'm a man. I'm generally wrong. I shouldn't argue. I'm finishing my marmalade smash. Tell them what's in there. This has uh, sorry, Bailey's in it, whipped cream, espresso beans, and I believe it said coffee liqueur, but we were saying that this, this just tastes basically like Bailey's with whipped cream. But it's, it is the best uh, of the astrology drinks here. Yes. Also, of note, celebrity, I wanted to say carnival. I really want to say carnival. It has real straws. Yes. yes. Edible yeah. straws. These are real straws, but they have edible straws. No. Carnival has edible straws. Yes. I said celebrity has, has real, real straws. straws. Okay, sorry. I, I was saying it correctly. I was backwards on that one. Bass backwards? What? Bass Ackwards. <laughs> Are you familiar with Bass Ackwards? It's like knocking futs? No. That's how you say ass backward. Oh. Kirsten's trying to show everybody what she could do with her tongue. Okay. Kirsten's OnlyFans link will be linked down below. No. Kirsten's Feet Finder link will be linked down below. You know, I do have a tattoo on my foot. And I've had guys tell me, I'm not in the feet, but you have great feet. I'm wearing tennis shoes. No. Oh. Insert foot picture here. Are we really gonna do that? You want to. Okay, so is this still good? Yeah. But you haven't even had the actual drink. You have not taken the thing. coffee beans and talking about my feet. Not even a non-alcoholic cocktail? Okay. Caesar. Hmm. Sombrero. Still good? Cool. Still great. All right. So you think that was a good, so we got, I got the end of my marmalade okay. smash. Now it actually has some orange marmalade in the bottom, which is kind of weird. No. It's a nice touch. You know, it's one of their special drinks. No, so. the marmalade. Yeah. yeah. I know, it's but a nice I touch. So okay. let's move on. Old fashioned. And now it's time to go down. But we're only going down Ooh, a bit. Going down. I know. Back to. Uh, uh, but we've got our drinks right here. Okay. Thank you. Vodka <clears> Kimlet. <throat> okay. We need 52. Oh. Triple nipple. Oh, wow. They're naming. Singapore flavor. They're naming cocktails. Kirsten. Mm -hmm. I could win this. Chocolate tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Sex on the beach. I could win this game so easily. Beach Bellini, I'm not Yes, I could out name all the old people in their cocktails. B52 has been sad, my dear. Uh-oh, someone just said B52 like five that seconds moment. ago. Very good choice. People ain't too White smart. <laughs> Moscow Mule. Ukraine Mule. Like Kiev Mule. Let's rename everything. Um, so we are going to go down. We're not going to go down that much, so let's go this way. We're going to go on a deck that doesn't exist on any other Solstice class ship. Well, I mean, it does exist, but it doesn't exist. Uh, this is deck 12, and this is normally the pool deck. Hmm. If you do watch our day one, we did a whole tour of the spa on day one, and we're going to go, can you hold that for a minute, Kristen? I just have to get my other backpack arm on or else I feel kind of weird. Um, we've got the fitness cell. You double sucking. You know what that is? This is for Rick. This is for Rick. Rick? Rick, you know what we call this? One girl. I thought that was like an Eiffel Tower thing. One girl. Yeah. Two cups. Okay. You familiar with two girls, one cup? No. Oh my God, I get to show her. I'm so excited. Kirsten doesn't know about two girls, one cup. Kirsten and Rick really are kind of a cruise buddies. Um, I'm gonna tell her about truffle butter 
And I'm going to show her two girls one you, you need to fit me in one of the rooms on one of the Rick cruises because, you know, there's that bed in the ceiling and I'm kind of tiny, so. You want to be on a Rick cruise? Sure. Oh, God. Oh, you, God. me. Hello. Hello. You, me, and Rick. So this is the spa and fitness center. It's where you can find me at 7 a.m. It's where you can find me at never eight. Oh, actually, you know, I do, I do like to come up here at about 13 a.m., mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's 24 hours a day here. So I do like to come up around 13 a.m. This is also the only place that you can really, well, actually, I'm incorrect in that because you could get right, remember that deck above, the dick deck, as we called it, mm -hmm. the solstice deck? You could get up, but I think this is one of the only other places you can really get out to the front of the ship. I'm gonna put on my hat really tight. Okay, yeah. All right, uh, this, nice uh, that, tight we're, good. Too. we're good. I'm not going out anymore. It's too windy. It's too miserable. Uh, but this. But I got yeah. all tight. Yeah, hold on. I, I, I need to. Oh, pretend you're. Uh, pretend you're sipping both again. I know one of them's empty. I gotta send that picture to Rick. Okay. Everybody knows who Rick is if they watch the. Uh, <laughs> we did the Carnival uh, Paradise a few weeks ago. No, I mean. Yeah, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, by the time this video goes up. But there's some other interesting areas on this ship that um, I want to show you that are unique to this ship. So, like I said, deck 12 used to be the pool deck. If you do want to see more of the uh, Persian gardens and the, the paid area you can pay for, that's actually on the first day uh, ship tour um, that we did of this ship. We did a whole tour. Kirsten made a terrible mistake. She gave our cabin number to a spa girl. I make that mistake from time to time. Hey, Kirsten, let's, let's talk a little inside baseball. You know, I, I actually want to see your reaction on this because I haven't told you this. Okay. okay. I used to like spa girls when okay. I worked on ships, specifically on this ship, right? But like, if you're dating like a girl from the shops or a girl from the bar, it's okay. It's acceptable, okay? When you date a spa girl, they call them Patin del Diablo. And I went to HR for telling this joke once. Oh, great. Okay. They have no control over me anymore, so I can make this joke. Do you know why you call spa girls that are in your cabin for the evening Patin del Diablo? Do you know what Patin del Diablo is? Diablo, I know, is devil. It's the skate of the devil is the actual. But the skate of the devil is a razor scooter. You know a razor scooter? Mm -hmm. Do you know why they call Razor Scooters Patin del Diablos? Mm -mm. Because they're fun to ride, but you wouldn't want to be seen riding one. Hmm. Ha ha ha. She did not like that one. Um, one girl, two cups. Done. I don't even, I had like one sip of that shit. But I'm gonna take you somewhere you haven't been yet. This is my favorite and you know what it tastes like, so. We're going to game on. Kirsten, I don't know what you're saying. The fuck is game on, right? Yeah, we, we haven't been there, I don't think. Have no. we? Something I actually helped set up on this ship. Mm. Uh, it's a bunch of Windows 95 computers running bad casino games. Hopefully, one of them still works. And I can show you what's going on at game on. So uh, come along with me and we'll go to game on. All right, so Kirsten said she hasn't seen it. I showed it to Rick. It's only fair I show it to Kirsten. No one's around here. I'm gonna show you. You were one girl with two cups, but you've never heard of two girls one cup. What? What am I? What am I about to? Learn? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Just watch. I can't show it on video, but I can show your reaction. <laughs> Keep watching. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Now, how do uh, mother how do mother birds feed baby birds? I am. This is. Oh my god. This is the worst thing. Oh, this is the worst thing. People are into this. This is a thing. Kirsten, how do mother birds feed baby birds? Can you just explain that? I'm to not people? looking at this anymore. I want to show you. The, look, she's feeding the baby bird. Oh. <laughs> That's how birds feed each other, isn't it? <laughs> what? Yuck. 
Now you know what two girls, one cup is, don't you? That is mm. disgusting. <laughs> that was like from like 15 years ago. And now uh, both you and Rick have been enchanted by that uh, lovely retelling of the tale as old as time. All right, so we're at the library now. You've probably ridden by the library, but haven't gone to it. Um, I'd like to, um, you know, the Haunted Mansion. Kirsten used to work in the Haunted Mansion. I think we alluded to that earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And do you know what they, they are, they totally follow Haunted Man Mansion logic in this library. Do you know why? Look at all the ghost stories right here. You see all the ghost stories in their library? Okay, an empty bookshelf. Oh, wait. With an X book thingy. You should put three X's there. And you have triple X. So it's kind of like two girls, one cup. Uh, so we got three books there. Now, here's what's funny. When this ship actually started, they wanted to put a Kindle vending machine here. They actually had Amazon as a sponsor. I'm spilling, like, real truths that are kind of funny. They tried it. Two weeks. The gays loved it. Pretty much you'd check out a Kindle with your room key and there'd be thousands of books loaded on it. It was there to actually promote the Kindle. The gays from the first gay cruise on this ship loved it. The second the seniors got here though, what's a Kindle? How does a Kindle work? And it's actually kind of funny because you've got the library down here, which has, Kirsten said, there's some very pretty puzzles. So I agree, there's some puzzles. And I've seen people, I've, I've ridden these elevators at two o'clock in the morning, right? And I've seen people here trying to solve these puzzles at two o'clock in the morning because they can't sleep. So this is uh, the insomnia zone down here, but they built something right under the library that we're gonna go to here, follow me. We don't need to stop this. Um, they built something under the library called Game On. It was created as a game room, but instead of just having like board games and stuff like other cruise ships. Have you been to game rooms on cruise ships before, right? Yeah. They decided they wanted to build games into the tables. So they have these digital tables that are literally running like Windows 95. <laughs> and they're loud, annoying. Oh, look, and Game On is completely full right now. Whoa. Oh, wow. Because this is God's waiting room. I'm hoping, I'll tell you, my other cruises, I have some other cruises coming up on Celebrity that are of a um, shorter length. So I'm hoping we're going to get a different demographic. But yeah, so this is the game room, also a new game on. I want to see how many of the tables are still working here. You've never been here on this cruise, I don't think. I don't think so. Uh, <coughs> so, I assume this so it used to be like a clock or something? That's new. Somebody just put bricks and screws on a wall. <laughs> I can't okay. see. What? That's weird. Yeah, so they built these uh, high tech tables and everybody's just using it to play cards on. And there's no. One person playing on the high-tech tables, and uh, everybody else just puts uh, scrabble tiles and stuff on the tables. I don't like showing other people that often, but I mean, you saw yeah. what's going on there, right? Yeah. No one was really using the high-tech tables. Yeah, they were just using them as tables. <laughs> Waste of money! Great job, Lisa! We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, Kirsten doesn't know Lisa very well. So, you actually, only yell at about her every time you've had eight or more drinks. So that's every night? <laughs> okay. So this is uh, Kirsten's most bird-like place. We're gonna look at it next. It is called The Hideaway. It spans two decks, much like the library, and it's kind of nesting in nature, would you say? Yeah. Bird-like? It's very foresty. We shot some videos here the other day on a port day when it was quieter. But you see, they got these two nests and a big nest, and they got a coffee machine and stuff. I think this is only on this ship. Could be on this ship in silhouette. It's definitely not on, uh, definitely not on Equinox. And they really cut in, they, they took some cabin space from there to, to build that public area. So 
It's one of the things that they they built on the uh, newer ships. So that's on deck eight and deck seven. Now we're gonna go to deck six. Now, when we came on board this ship, I told Kirsten, deck six was actually my old office. Um, it's the eye lounge. I started with Celebrity to actually uh, get the eye lounge up and running. It's a place where people could learn about Apple products and everything like that. Um, interesting concept overall. Now, they just wait for ships to go to dry dock and they turn it into three cabins. <laughs> you know that's what they're doing now? Aww. They're literally waiting for these ships to go to dry dock and if they have the time in dry dock, they connect the plumbing and build three to four new cabins hmm. right here. Uh, but this was an Apple premium authorized reseller. Here it is right here. And um, let's see what's here. I don't even want to get started on how bad the internet is on this ship. I think I'm going to make a separate video on that. Uh, but uh, they are selling knockoff Apple watches. Pictures of a cruise ship, I guess. Uh, Fujifilm, the eye lounge and the photo department did merge uh, after the illness. Uh, it's actually really funny. Currently, if you want to see something really funny, watch this. You ready? Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to be a bad person. I'm just trying to show how nothing ever changes. Some things never change. Da -da 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 -da. I'm an administrator. I don't know if you noticed that, Kirsten. Uh huh. I noticed. Okay, I'm just. You guys should really think about changing your passwords sometimes, right? And you haven't worked here for how many years? Eleven years. Jeez. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, this is dead. I mean, like, this, uh, just so you know, this used to have, like, Apple Watches and iPads and all this stuff on display. And it was like an Apple store. It was kind of like your bird store. They would come up here, talk Apple. They'd bring their phones and stuff like that. It's like... And it's just not working now? Like well, they people, moved to the they photo just... gallery. Ah. I mean, look at this. Curson, iPod Touch. Right? When's the last time you saw an iPod Touch in real life? At least 10 years ago. Yeah! When's the last time you saw a MacBook Air that looked like that? With bezels that big? I don't look at MacBook Airs very much. That was the OG MacBook Air. Mm. When's the last time you saw an iMac this thick? I mean, it's a, I mean look. Pretty girthy. The TV, Kirsten likes girthy things. The TV app is not available right now. I'm... Yeah, it's, it's very sad what this has become. How they went from selling Apple Watches to selling literally no bullshit. Wait, hold up. Hold up. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Are you not catching what's going on here? What? They are advertising for other departments. They don't even sell this stuff. The shops are owned by a third party. It's telling you to visit the shops. Okay. Why do you advertise for a third party? Are you a moron? I'm not saying you. I'm saying intrinsically, are you a moron? I guess we already know the answer, don't we? So let's just, I, I would like to uh, review. Um, let's review, Kirsten. Let's see, uh, I wanna see where we've seen, where we haven't seen, I think that's fair. We have a giant map of the ship, because why not? Remember the dick deck? Yes. That we didn't go all the way up there. Fun Factory X Club, the Mass Grill, which had the hamburgers and hot dogs, Pool Pool Bar, Solarium, and the, and the Spa Cafe, the Lawn Club Grill, the Sunset Bar, the Lawn Club, we skipped Future Cruise Sales, Library Game On, Hideaway, Eye Lounge, but you see, you know what we have down here? All kinds of stuff on the bottom to take a look at. So, so far we've only dealt with the top, and the good news is, from this point forward, 
We can take the stairs. Oh. Yay. So, um, my favorite exercising is removing the demons from my soul. Uh, right? That's exercising. Uh, but we're going to go to an area that um, I, think, I think we went to once. Sorry for this cruise, Kirsten, right? That area that I told you is where a piano bar would be. Mm -hmm. I think we literally went to this area once, correct? Oh, no, I think I, I saw you took some stills here. Yeah. So you must have been back here at least once more without me. Yes. Um, it is so, the closest restroom to the, uh, the bar with the martini glass bow tie thing. Okay, we're going there. Oh, to the world class. Okay. Yes. So this is an area that's actually different on all five Solstice class ships. Uh, so if you do go on another ship, silhouette, uh, silhouette, solstice, uh, uh, we're on reflection, equinox, silhouette, solstice, equinox, or eclipse. You do that. Now this is an interesting thing. This is somewhere we can't actually go. But this is Michael's Club. This is the exclusive area for the suites. Um, I've talked to a lot of suite passengers this cruise. I don't know if you have. And they're all not very happy. Um, because they took away their drink package everywhere. They can only drink in that bar specifically. And I think it's interesting because I'm going on the competitor to Celebrity Suites. I'm going on in three weeks. Which is the MSC Yacht Club. It's half the price. And supposedly even better. So uh, I do know the suite experience from Celebrity. Now is not the time to talk about it because I'm not on a suite this cruise. But I can just show you the actual suite people. I, just, I had to explain to a lot of actual suite guests that they no longer get drinks by default everywhere on the ship unless they buy a beverage package, hmm. which is kind of disturbing. Now, this is somewhere we didn't get to go. Uh, this is called Murano. Uh, this is the, we tried to go here on the first night um, and then it was busy, it was busy, it was busy. Uh, this is the French restaurant on board. If you ever do get to go back on Celebrity, in my recollection, again, I can't tell you because we didn't do it this cruise. In my recollection and in my last cruise in March, it was actually very good. They do make a uh, table side lobster and stuff like that. I know you have a tiny tummy, so it's probably a rough restaurant for you to go to uh, tiny tummy wise. Um, and then you have a bar right here. And like we we're saying, this area, the ensemble lounge, I'm not saying it is one, but this is the closest thing that Celebrity has to a piano bar. There's no requests, there's no buying the musicians alcohol or anything like that, but I mean, they have the, they, they generally on this cruise, they've had the Latin group in here. They've had a Latin group, they've had a duo. I haven't, so, so, I, here's the thing I would say, Kirsten, I think, I think you're with me. I haven't found the onboard musicians, you could stop for two seconds, because uh, it's hard to put you in the frame. Uh, I haven't found the onboard positions, musicians, Particularly good or particularly bad. They just are. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, they're fine. There's nothing, nothing intrinsically good. Nothing intri nothing's made me want to sit and listen to them for hours and nothing's said run away. Mm -hmm. If they're in the background, hey, they're in the background. But it's not like that cute piano guy on the, on the horizon. He seemed to be on the bliss. You wish he was on the bliss. Cruise. Bliss cruise. Bliss cruise. That was a swinging joke. Um, so this is a, this used to be the best restaurant on any cruise ship in the world, right here. It was called Cuisine, all right? Let's talk about this for a minute. What if I told you there was a restaurant that was so inventive, you were encouraged to play with your food. It was fun, like one of the desserts was called Strawberry Fields, and the guy would come out wearing a big field and he'd pick straw, chocolate covered strawberries out of the field. They had little egg custards that were actually in eggshells. They had a drink called, not a drink, they had a food called a disc shrimp, where you would get shrimp and it would be like a disco glass and everything like that. Mm. Sounds fun, right? Cute, yeah. No, they fucked that up. Really? Yeah, it's garbage now. Uh, they literally project on your table now a small little man. Oh, uh, yeah. But cuisine is the name of the original concept. And what's cool is, here's a cool kind of fun fact, the guy who made this restaurant concept, mm -hmm. about two months ago, he is now the executive chef for MSC. So, I think you're going to see something cool and creative 
like this coming on MSC ships really soon. Because that's, that's what he's known for. His name is JVS or Jacques van Staten. And that's literally what he's known for. So I think that's a, kind of a, a cool thing there. Uh, so JVS, Jacques van Staten. You'll see what it is, is it's just a uh, projection a little man. I actually have a video of the whole thing that's posted on my YouTube. I might link it below. Now this is called Blue. B-L-U. Do you know what this is, Kirsten? No. You have to talk a little louder because the mic's just out. I do not know. Okay. This is the healthy restaurant. Mm. And to eat in the healthy restaurant, you must book healthy class. You know what a healthy class? I, I ate here three times. No. Ever. In seven years. What does that mean? Uh, it's called aqua class. It's like their spa class. You know how MSC has a spa class and Norwegian has a spa class. So this is a separate restaurant just for their spa class guests. If you are in a suite, you can also eat here, but it's just for a certain class of guests. You can get stuff from the main dining room menu, but this is a special kind of uh, less butter, less fat, less everything like that option. Okay. Less fun. That's, that's, that's the way I feel. Um, got another place. Unfortunately, <coughs> unfortunately, I tried to get a reservation at Murano. Tried to get a reservation at Queen Cuisine. Tried to get a reservation at Tuscan. The only thing we can get a reservation at was Long Club Grill, which was meh. 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 Plus mojitos. Oh, well, yeah. Plus Long Club Grill spiked lemonade. Um, and this right here is Tuscan Grill. This is their Italian restaurant. Again, haven't, <coughs> haven't been able to... I didn't make reservations before or anything like that. But I sometimes like to make a deal on board. You'll see. That is the Italian restaurant. Here's the fun thing. So right here, I'm going to give you a little inside baseball. The, the, my, the internet loves inside baseball. They normally have a prosciutto slicer out here. All right? Do you know how hard it is to clean a meat slicer for a health inspection? I don't know. I've never thought about that. The answer is near impossible. Hmm. So do you know where that meat slicer went every single time we went to a U.S. port when I was working on ships? They might check, like the public health people might come and check the um, food and beverage manager's cabin for stuff or, you know, the bar manager's cabin for stuff. Don't tell me that you hid the meat slicer. I had the meat slicer. I had the orange juice machine. I had all that stuff in my cabin. And all I asked for was a case of beer a week. Like even the person. See these things? These little placemats? They're impossible to clean. So they stack them up. They put them in people's cabins. Because if you put that in a machine that's going to get it to boiling water, what's going to happen to that? Probably going to come apart. It disintegrates. So, uh, welcome to cruise ships, <laughs> where we know they do these things. Um, so, we're looking at the specialty restaurants. We're going to head back over to Cafe Albaccio now, and we will continue the tour from there. So, I almost forgot I am a select member, even though I worked on ships for seven years. Uh, somehow, I'm a select member on Carnival. Uh, so, not Car oh God, I said Carnival. I'm a so platinum right. member on Carnival. Somehow a select member on Celebrity, uh, and you got uh, some free. How's the gelato? Good. Some free, <laughs> free gelato. Normally it'd be like five bucks. <clears throat> so you got gelato, which does have an additional charge. There's some ice cream up in the buffet. You've had the ice cream in the buffet, right? It's pretty okay, right? It's pretty okay. And then you've got the Cafe Albaccio here. Of note, I told this to Kirsten the first day. I don't know if she took advantage of it. Have you tried any of the cakes and the cookies and stuff in the... I haven't, but they look so beautiful. The, so all of this, unlike, unlike Carnival, the line that Kirsten says I love, and I deeply do, uh, they don't charge you an extra three, five dollars a slice for this kind of stuff here. <coughs> it's actually... It's always an upcharge on any other line. Even Norwegian? Yeah. Unique selling proposition, I guess. Um, kind of unique. Uh, also, just a note, I don't think you know this, and it really hasn't been something we've had to use this cruise, because when we've been drinking this cruise, we've gotten, like, right at the bar before it opened. So, like, we always had a seat at the bar. 
but when the bars are slammed, like between dinner and stuff, this is actually a full service bar. So the cafe is a full service bar. They've got beers, they've got liquors, they've got all that. So you can come when no one's here in the cafe. That's like a fun tip that I shouldn't have shared, but I did. I said that because it can only hurt me. You understand that? Like, I know that it's a full service bar. So um, we got sushi on five. We went here for lunch today. Used to be bistro on five and this and that. What do you think of sushi on five? A little overpriced for what it was? Yeah, it, it was good, but not super special. Nothing, I agree. It was good, but not super special for the price. And you had said you'd probably rather your Coke get your, uh, what's Kona the name? Grill. Kona Grill sushi. So now we're gonna move on to another bar that we did a drinking challenge at. And unfortunately, we have another hour until this bar opens. Now I will tell you what was the best drink here. Let's see. Oh God, I saw two girls, one cup. What was the best drink here? The best drink here was the American Pie Cocktail. That was good. That was good. And the Celebrity Number 10. I think when we're gonna come back here right at five to kind of wrap up this video, the Celebrity Number 10 you liked. That was the pink one right at the beginning. I think you were able to drink that one, it wasn't too strong. So we'll get an American Pie Cocktail and a Celebrity Number 10 later. We have another hour until we can make it back to here until it opens. Um, but this is the kind of shops area, the bar area. This is the world-class bar. We'll talk about it more later. It's an ad to Diageo. We drank the entire menu there. I think the only place we failed, and Kirsten knows we failed, and we're gonna make this right. So we don't fail and not make something right. The only place we failed was in the martini bar. Because I was like, oh, let's do a double shot of some kind of gin on the rocks in the middle of the challenge. And guess what happened? Kirsten was dancing and I was saying she's not my wife yet. And then you fell asleep and I got a picture, insert picture here. God, she's trying to make my life really hard. I don't like editing. Uh, so, so let's talk about shops. What do you know about cruise line shops? Same crap everywhere. I want, I want to go more specific, yes. That's not cruise line shops, that's like cruise port shops. Come in just a little bit. Same crap everywhere, but the whole goal is we're going to go down to deck four. That's the t-shirt and souvenir and liquor store. Their goal is to get you from deck four up to deck five. This is where the money is. The money is up in these watches that are pretty much sold for at least a 50% markup. <coughs> now here's the funny thing. Do uh, people who have money actually even buy this crap anymore? I don't know. I don't normally see people in these places. And right. They're always trying to get you in with like. Right. Oh, uh, I'm just talking about like, hey, like no, in. but like specifically. Look, we got watches. No, no one's even working in here. Okay. We got these high-end watches, Breitling, Omega, Tiffany, all that. Hey, Kirsten, there's this thing. I don't know what it's called. People like to wear it on their wrist. I think you got one earlier this uh, this this cruise, just that I had sitting around, right? What's it called? An Apple Watch. People who have money don't buy this shit anymore. They just want a basic Apple Watch. It's kind of like having China in your China cabinet at home. Like our generation just doesn't like appreciate that. We just want like the convenience and the. Um, Is that a Donald Trump China? China? That's a virus. It came from there. It's China. What? We, we like the functionality and convenience of Apple Watches. We don't need to pay a bunch of money to be like, ooh, look at my watch. I mean, some people do. But... Poor people do. Poor people buy rich people watches. Look, the only reason I have this watch is because I beat the absolute crap out of it. This is the Apple Watch Ultra. And this one lasts double the length on batteries. And when you're talking about God's waiting room, sometimes you'll see one of God's residents. Wait a minute. Did you say double the length? I mean, sorry. Double the girth. You'll see some of God's <laughs> residents just like, blocking doorways it's kind of funny even if we wanted to go in this shop we couldn't because god's waiting room has protected us <laughs> from going in the shop now you'll see the ship is lined with um we'll talk about this downstairs a little bit it's lined with can i can i can i use my bunny ears art 
mainly just fancy photocopies, but uh, art. So this is actually, so let me tell you something I used to do right here. This, this, this hallway holds a very specific significance to me. You getting messages from people? Yeah. You getting butt dialed? No, I, people, you know, I'm important. People are saying things to me. So you see this hallway right here? I actually used to use this hallway in a class. I used to wear, it's funny, I ran into a passenger that knew me from back when I worked on this ship back in the day. Uh, I used to actually wear a vest and a safari hat, and we would do a photo safari. It's actually something that Apple stole from me. Like Apple stores, now they go around and they like walk around the mall that they're in and do like a photo safari. I actually created that concept. Fight me, Apple. I know I'm right. I have, I have the evidence to prove I'm right. <clears throat> so I would teach people in this hallway how to actually use the selfie timer and take pictures of themselves. Because what you could do is you could prop a cell phone exactly on this wall at any angle you wanted to. And then I taught them how to go ahead and take selfies with the selfie timer right in this hallway. I'd take 20 people, we'd go all over the ship, we'd do a safari, they'd learn about panoramas, they'd learn about everything else like that. And I created that. And here's what was really cool about the safari. What it did, why the safari was so, actually so welcomed by everyone, is we would go stop by every department. So we'd stop by the shops, and I'd teach them how to take a close-up picture of a watch. We'd stop, I, this, there was a time I didn't have a soul. You know about that time? It's when I thought Park West was a reputable company. Hmm. I know, I had to play nice with them. Okay. But uh, there was a time that we would go learn, well, I mean, when I'm about to tell you what this, you're not going to think it's a reputable company. I had this app that you could take a picture of a piece of art and it would tell you what it was actually worth. <laughs> For some reason, whenever I took a picture of any of these Park West pieces, you know what it always said? This is garbage? Yeah, it did. It said nothing. Um, but um, yes. I mean, you've gone to enough art auctions to know, right? Like, uh, OK. I want to say one more thing about the art auction. On like the Norwegian ships, things tend to be going for maybe like a hundred or a few hundred dollars. I saw them in an art auction here. The only auction I passed by, they had a Peter Max up, and they were asking for a bid of forty-eight thousand dollars. But nobody bid. Yeah, they were no. asking for a bid of forty-eight thousand. Right. Well, because remember, you don't uh, you don't advertise to the clientele you have. You advertise to the clientele you want. want. Uh, yeah, you, you're not selling a piece on this ship for 40 grand. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule. Sometimes the art auction will bring on their own people. They'll pay for the cabins, kind of like the casino does. Like I said, this is a casino cruise for me, making sure I got my phone. Um, so they'll bring on their own people and everything like that. So next place up on our journey is actually the um, photo gallery. Now, here's another funny thing. Back where I would, you know, teach that right back there that I showed. I used to actually teach how to use a GoPro. Now, I didn't benefit at all from selling GoPros. Photo gallery did. I was always friends with the photo manager. We'd always drink at night and stuff like that. And it was beneficial because if you got a GoPro, what were you gonna get to go along with your GoPro likely? A laptop or an iPad to edit, to edit your GoPro footage on. So it kind of worked out beneficially for each. And it's kind of funny how, uh, how everything merged together and how the photo gallery is the internet and the internet is the photo gallery and everything like that. And for some reason, up in the eye lounge, which is the Apple area, they're advertising garbage smartwatches. You saw that, right? Yes, this is the first cruise I've been on where they haven't tried to like grab me and take my picture everywhere too. They haven't had all the picture stuff set up. Norwegian since COVID too? They've been doing it or no? They, After COVID things changed because they don't have the staff anymore. I think that's they the do important the, thing. They do the photos still. They do it, but they're, they're not as aggressive because they don't have the staff to do it. I think only Carnival has really gotten enough of a resurgence. Um, and the name of the company that used to run the photo departments on every cruise ship was called the Image Group. That was before COVID. There was a guy, people behind me might twitch when I say his name. His name was Fat Andy. Uh, Fat Andy was uh, the photo guy. He, he managed the whole relationship with the Image and the cruise ships and everything like that. And it just kind of went shit. But here's what's funny. You go up to the eye lounge, which is advertised as an Apple reseller and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. You saw they were selling garbage smartwatches, right? But for some reason down here, 
Like that app, does, does, does that make any sense? It's interesting. What? That's interesting. Now, do you know the story of how Celebrity got Apple Watches on their ship? Oh, I must tell that story. But uh, I will say that uh, Starlink itself has not been a big improvement on this ship. Why Starlink has not been a big improvement on this ship is because they've spent too much time. There are two different internet packages you can get. We'll talk about it in public right here. There are two different internet packages you can get on this ship. One gives you access to everything, and one is a more limited internet package. The system that's making sure that you can't access things is actually slowing down the connection considerably. Oh. How do I know that? How do I know that, Kirsten? Yes. How do I know that, Kirsten? Because you used to work here. Oh, not even even better than that. Because you opened this ship. You were the even opening than that. IT manager. Who do you think built the system? You. Yeah. So they fucked it up. They turned on content filtering, and Starlink is actually worse than the old. And this is not just me. I've talked to many other people, and Starlink is worse. But here's, I got to tell a funny story when we're in the photo gallery slash internet lounge. So you know me. You know this story is insane when I'm about to sell, but you're going to go, it's true. It was actually on this ship. So when they were opening this ship, they had a meeting of all the managers, right? And the meeting of all the managers was along with the CEO of the company, the real company, Richard Fain. He's the CEO of Royal Caribbean Corporate. Then you had the CEO of Celebrity, who was Lisa Lutoff at the time. You had a couple of different CEOs and C-suite people. Now, did everybody tell me to just shut my mouth when I was in that meeting? Because they know I have a big mouth. You know I have a big mouth, right? You're the loudest person I know. So, <laughs> believe it or not, there was a time when this ship didn't sell Apple Watches. And I'm actually the reason that celebrity sells Apple Watches. Because I opened my big fucking mouth. What do I mean by that? So they're like, they're asking, hey. They do this whole meeting with the CEO and they go, does anybody have any questions? And there's just death stares going around. Because you're just supposed to give compliments and stuff like that. You're not supposed to ask any questions. I raise my hand. I go, hey, Rich. Rich here. I got a question for you. Why is it that a guy with a gold tooth in Walmart can sell an Apple Watch, but we can't? Valid question, right? He's asking his employee. He goes, it's a good question. I'll get back to you. Right? Do you know how much trouble I got in for asking that question? It's disrespectful. It's this. It's that. I got screamed at to all holy hell for asking what I believed was a very simple question. I got in trouble for like four days. I got like written warnings and stuff like that. One day, my phone, my deck phone on the ship rings. And it just says external on it. So if you get a call from anyone on the ship, it'll say, hey, guest services is calling. Hey, casino manager's calling. Hey, photo department's calling. Hey, captain's calling, right? It just said external. I was like, okay. Cool. I pick it up. Whatever. I've never seen that before. It's a direct call from Richard Fain. He goes, you're going to be in the Bahamas tomorrow. He goes, I've got you a plane ticket. You're flying to New York. I look at him and I go, what? He goes, we're going to get the ship to have the certification so that we can sell Apple Watches. And you're going to be the first ship to sell Apple Watches. I'm flying you out to New York to take the certification test. He goes, I know you can pass it. I know you don't need any time to study. And I was like, you're, you're probably right. All I had to do was know about all the Apple products. You, <laughs> you know I know about all. You're a walking Apple store. But what's so funny is we got Apple Watches the next week. So sometimes it pays to ask questions. But I think the, the most annoying thing is I think on this ship, the way they're running it with their content filtering, uh, I have, <coughs> it's not one internet. There are multiple internets. And unless you turn on a VPN or something like that, you're beholden to their internet. When I was trying to show you two girls one, well, when I successfully showed you two girls one cup earlier, um, <coughs> they were blocking that on board. Do you know why they were blocking that on board? Because it's disgusting. No, no, no. They block all porn on board. All porn is blocked on the ship's Wi-Fi. All porn is blocked on the ship's Wi-Fi. Do you know why? Because I walked in on some guy in the eye lounge jerking it off uh, at 4 in the morning one day. Uh, I forgot my phone up there in a closet, and there was a guy wacka-wacking off. 
And that's why you can't watch porn on celebrity ships. What? Where to next? Where to next? Downstairs. Oh, okay. This is my favorite piece of art on any celebrity ship, and you have not seen this yet. <coughs> I think they're... So take a look at this piece of art, Kirsten. My favorite piece of art on any celebrity ship. Would, would you like... I'll read it out loud. What a kid I was. I remember practicing the violin in front of a roaring fire. My old man walked in. He was furious. We didn't have a fireplace. Have you seen that before? No. It's my favorite piece of art on any celebrity ship. It's by a guy named Richard Prince, born in 1949, American, when I was a kid. This is from his joke series, Silkscreen on Canvas, uh, and it comes from the galaxy. The galaxy was actually an old celebrity ship. Now, next place we're kind of going towards is the theater. And uh, I do have a couple clips from what I believe is the best production show that celebrities ever made. It's actually called, um, oh, what the hell was the name of that show? Uh, oh, God. Broken Strings. Thank you, Kirsten. I keep her around for a reason. No. I'm kidding, Kirsten. I'm kidding. It was called Broken Strings. Um, and they are close for rehearsals because I do believe that they're actually doing a cast change right now. So we're not going to open that fire door, even though I always tell people, Whenever you see closed door on cruise ships, most of the time, it's not locked. You know why? Because you might show up and take a video. No. Because if you lock a door, you have to give out a thousand keys. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So most doors on cruise ships are not locked. Because if you lock a door, you got to give out a thousand keys. Here, I want to throw to a little video of uh, one of the theater shows, Broken Strings. So we are now in the entertainment court. We did go on a slight diversion because Kirsten had some, her ice cream was not loving her. It was good ice cream, but I also had just drank two Pisces. Oh, that's right. You double, double fisted the Pisces. Yeah, so I just so need she needed some water and I needed another Stella. So we went to that bar that literally like, it was funny, I asked her. I said, all the bars were slammed. Martini bar was slammed, uh, casino bar was slammed because all the bars are not open. Like this auxiliary bar right here. Is gonna open in like an hour. Takes a little bit of the pressure off of the martini bar and the casino bar. So we went to Cafe Albaccio, and there was no one there, was there? No. Nope. That's that's. Uh, I don't just tell you things to tell you things. I tell you things because they're actually useful. This is the entertainment court. Now something Kirsten said earlier in the cruise that she really loved about Norwegian was like the game shows after the shows and stuff like that. Yeah. Now we actually participated in a game show literally right here a bit earlier in the cruise, didn't we? And it's a game show that I even told her. I said, I've played this game show a hundred times. Just on the other side of the fence. It was an officers versus guests game show. I slayed at every one of those challenges, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Even though I was way gone that night, wasn't I? No, you didn't they do like... We got hats. We did get hats. I mean, they're not as cool as these hats, are they? These hats are baller, yeah. uh, but they do, they do do, I love to say do do, uh, they do a game show here or in Celebrity Central, which we'll go to in a minute, every night at eight, uh, you want to check out between the shows. Some of these nights, Kirsten went to go visit, she had a special date with Mr. Pillow and Mrs. Blanket. Are you familiar with Mr. Pillow and Mrs. Blanket? Especially after we finished an entire bar menu, Mr. Pillow and Mr. Blanket are horizontal. Horizontal. So speaking of whore, Horizontal. I want to talk about Celebrity Central. I'm going to tell you a funny story about Celebrity Central. Um, it was not on this ship that it happened, but same basic thing. So this is where we were in the eye lounge earlier. And when I started with this company, I was teaching classes in the eye lounge up on deck six. Then I outgrew that area and had to move here. And then eventually I was teaching classes in the main theater like that we can't go into because we're in an rehearsals right now. orange tunnel. We're in an orange tunnel. And this leads to where they show movies inside. It's also where they do future cruise presentations and all that. If there's a movie going on, we're just going to peek in for like eight seconds and then close it. I won't say anything. Yeah, there's a movie. What is that movie? It looks like women learning to drive. Yes, women need to learn to drive. But, <laughs> Kirsten did not like that joke. I'm a great driver. Well, no, come back here. I want to tell you a story. So, you understand the demographics on this ship, right? They thought it was a good idea 
to do comedy in here. So they brought out two comedians, kind of like Carnival. Remember Carnival had the comedians that were in the special comedy lounge? They tried about, God, 12, 13 years ago to turn this into a comedy lounge. Cool, whatever. No one's offended by that. But then they made a really dumb decision. They said, we're going to have a comedy act. Then we're going to have a burlesque dancer. Then we're going to have another comedy act. Okay. You understand the demographics on this ship? How do you think that burlesque dancer went over with all the wives? They maybe didn't like it because this feels like a uh, more an older conservative crowd. Do you think you're going to bring a burlesque dancer to a retirement home? No. Celebrity thought they were going to bring a burlesque dancer to a retirement home. And Kirsten, who was the person the first night they said they're going to mis mix burlesque and comedy at 1 o'clock in the morning? Who was the highest ranking person still awake and at that show? Probably you. Who was wearing senior officer uniform still awake and at that show at 1 o'clock in the morning? You. Who became the closest punching bag at 1 o'clock in the morning for everybody to let their frustrations out when their husband saw some titties that were not dripping on the floor for the first time in 20 years? I guess you. I got the absolute crap kicked out of me that night. I literally kept poking my thing. I said, this doesn't say guest relations. This doesn't say entertainment. I'm like, if you've got a problem with your internet, I can help it. Please just leave me alone. I just came to see the boobies like you. I didn't like that response either. They're like, he said he just came to see the boobies like me. It was very clear in the daily program that it was burlesque. I think the problem is, I don't, maybe, maybe old people don't understand what the word burlesque means. No, I think they know. You think they just want to be Karens for fun? Probably. Get a free cruise? I want a free cruise! All right. Speaking of free cruise, uh, myself and Kirsten are on a free cruise courtesy of the Fortunes Casino, which is, I guess, where you can lose a... A lot of money. What's another word for a lot of money? Fortune. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> the Fortunes Casino, where uh, you can lose a lot of money, also known as a... Fort when I was on here in March, I played what I believed was a small amount of roulette. You know me. Do I know what a small amount of anything is? No. Common sense, decency, filter, all those things. I don't really know about small amounts, do I? Number of items on the menu to order. Have you ever seen me actually deal with a small amount of anything? No. So, I mean... I, I, I wagered at least $2,500 on the table when I was here in March, and I was invited for six free cruises. Wow. I've booked four of those six free cruises. Now, we are not going to cross the threshold that officially puts us in the casino because we can't record in the casino while it's open. I did a whole recording while the casino was closed, though. But I'm going to have <laughs> Kirsten take my picture right here with the Fortunes Casino because I need it for a thumbnail. This is, this is called Scrambling on the Last Day. Um, but I want to tell you about my experience here. High five. I don't need the camera in the way. There, we're good? Yeah. All right. So, third night of the cruise, I was playing pretty consistently. Oh, hold on. My camera stopped tracking me. So I'm playing, playing pretty consistently in the casino. I uh, played some Ultimate Texas Hold'em, which is playing against the house. I played Texas Hold'em, which is playing against other people. And we decided when the Texas Hold'em <laughs> table broke, we were going to go play some Ultimate Texas Hold'em together. We were playing Texas, we were bullshitting. Texas is player versus player, it's about bullshitting other people, that's what it is. So we're playing Ultimate Texas Hold'em, and all of a sudden, this pit boss comes over and threatens to close the table. It's one o'clock in the morning. Carson's heard this story so many fucking times before. Like 40,000. Because I'm angry about it. Uh -huh. uh, it's one o'clock in the morning, and pit boss comes over and he goes, I'm closing the table because you guys are using language. Now, let's talk about the deadly sins. There's seven deadly sins, right? I'm no, I'm no Jesus lover. Yeah. I'm no religion person. I know! I know! So, I'm no religious person. But I believe gambling and alcoholism are two of those deadly sins. Uh, they're in there using different words, but yeah. I'm already being a... What would you say I am again? Degenerate gambler alcoholic. Kind of, I mean, you Probably just, like two or yeah. three of them right there. You can just say degenerate, and it kind of works. The rest is kind of implied. I'm already a degenerate gambler alcoholic, and I go... What's your particular flavor, though? I'm like, the fuck is this? Church. Church? Like, you can't curse 
at one o'clock. And I've not, you know what, Kirsten? I think the simplest thing, and I think even you'll agree with me, the simplest thing if you disagree with the business, and again, you don't disagree with the entirety of this business. We spent money in Sushi on Five today, you know. We, I've given tips in all the bars and stuff like that. But when you disagree with something, the easiest way to walk is with your money, correct? Yes, I do want to mention though that this is the first ship that's actually given me free play as a guest. I got $5 of free play and I put that through a machine and turned it into $2.74. So Kirsten lost almost half of her free money yeah. in the slot machine. But there was no risk, so I got $2.74. You know what I turned mine into? What? That. Aw. Because I played Wheel of Fortune. I did five rolls at a dollar a roll mm. just to kind of try and win something. But I taught Kirsten how to play free play through a casino. But you know why they did that? Get me in the casino. Yes. Most casinos are not that desperate for players. That's, it's, it's desperation. Okay. So, let's move on. We've got a couple more places to go to. Um, <coughs> we got the liquor store. Have you been to the liquor store? I have not. I just took a peek in. So I, I came by for liquor tasting one or two nights after I did all my drinking challenges. Came by for liquor tasting. Um, they had all this liquor tasting. Here's the liquor store. Now you can buy stuff in this. Again, if this is your first cruise, you might not know this, is you can buy things in the liquor store, but you cannot consume them until you get home. So sad. But uh, my, one, my one secret tip I tell people is... Um, if you're staying back to back, buy all you need for the second cruise and the liquor cruise on the first cruise, and they don't know that you're staying back to back. Yeah, I said that out loud. That's uh, one of my favorite tricks. Uh, so they don't know you're staying back to back, so you have a whole fully stock cabin of liquor for the next cruise. Hey, look, these are the hats, but like we won a hat the other night. None of these are the hats. I actually like our hats better. They're a little more subdued than those. This is the, uh, the logo store. A ship model again this has a higher uh, most of the ships are 2800 in this class or 2800 people this is a 3046 but that's at like a crazy oh look Kirsten look they sell bad captain hats here bad captain hat right <laughs> so they sell uh, not not good captain hats but bad captain hats um, I do love the color orange. There's a lot of orange in here, isn't there, Kristen? I noticed, and I noticed too that like all the people working on the ship, they wear the dark blue, and then they usually have like an orange belt. Well, the orange, the orange is actually the color of the edge class, mm. which you may get to sail on one day if I. So the problem is I always get the offers for celebrity, and I'm never home to call in time for the casino offers. So the edge stuff's already taken. But if I do get an edge offer, you can come on edge. That, that ship has a, I'm not even lying here, has a giant tennis court that hangs off the side of the ship. The problem too is that I also cruise so much that we have to like look at our calendar and see like when do we not have cruises. Like you have a cruise, but I have a cruise and you should you take know. a picture there. You should ah, hold okay. on to the bat. Do we need to take a picture of Oh, no, no, we're good. Here, look. No, oh, put your bottle down there. We gotta take the bottle. There we go. Like you're smashing something. Like you're like Miley Cyrus. You came in like a wrecking ball. Yeah, there we go. And look, there's a baseball there. But, oh God, I haven't drank my Stella yet. Let me do that real quick. Kirsten, you have some feelings on the ship that are stuff I might object to because I'm gonna drink my Stella for a moment. Go ahead. Uh, I think that this is a nice, fine cruise and that it's a little tamer than other cruises. You know, they don't have the quest on here. The quest, that got really wild on Carnival. Oh my God, and there's that got wild nothing, on Carnival. There's nothing comparable on this ship. And you know, MSC has the quest as well. I would say that their quest was PG rated. On Carnival, it was X rated and on Celebrity, it is non-existent. You mean it's dead? Oh, yeah. What? It's dead. Um, 
I'm, I'm drinking my Stella. I think that this is a fine cruise though. Like if this was your first cruise and you didn't have anything to compare it to, you probably got on this ship and had a great time. But if you rank, again, if you rank every cruise you've ever taken, let's pretend you've taken 20 cruises, mm -hmm. all right? Again, we're just picking a number 20. Number one would be the best. Well, so I know the answer is not this cruise. What is the best cruise you've ever taken? Um, it, I'm talking about the ship. I'm not talking about the destination. I know, because you know I like that Pride of America that goes around That's Hawaii. Fine. And that, that isn't the ship, though. That's the itinerary. I'm asking. Because um, itineraries favorite. can change. You know, you I know. love Delore of the Seas. Okay. Yes. I don't disagree with you there. It's not my favorite, um, but it's, it's up there. Yes. Oasis class is probably like number three in, in classes of ships. So that's number one. I, what, what else do I love? Um, I, I don't, I don't know if I have a favorite like Norwegian ship. I just really like their activity schedules during the day because I feel like I have fun things to choose from all day long and lots of games. And here there's a lot more like quieter things to do, like just like a puzzle. I want to interject. You actually book. did an entire video on that comparing Norwegian to Celebrity, this on the mm -hmm. channel as well, yes. that you may have not seen before this video posted. Um, so, I was leading the witness. You ranked number one. Where would you put this in the scheme of things between one and 20? It's closer to 20. So it's a fine ship if you have no good ships to compare it to. Yeah. But if you're a seasoned cruiser, and you're looking for a piano bar, you might not want this ship. A piano bar, a nightclub that's not also a teen program, a, co a legit cocktail menu that everybody knows how to make. There's if, a list. If you plan There's a on, list of things. If you plan on eating around or after midnight, um, ships that are geared towards younger people are gonna have more of those night options. I mean, even, look, I'll be honest with you, and I think, I think it's fair for me to tell people, um, I'm going to say that this is third from the bottom for me. Okay? Really? Third from the bottom. My favorite is the Carnival Celebration. Mm -hmm. I still have to rank this ship, and we're going to wrap it up. This is not the wrap up. We still got a couple more spots. I still have to rank this ship higher than the two Virgin Voyages ships I've been on. Wow. Virgin Voyages is such a clusterfuck. In the end of the day, this ship has some issues. Again, I'm not wrapping it up. I'm just giving you logic. The ship has some issues, but, 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 they know how to handle crowds. You know, the first night, getting in the dining room was a clusterfuck. Now, every night when we leave the dining room, do I just flag the guy down who's really nice? Uh, I flag the guy down, I give him my cabin number, I say 845, and we're done, and the next, and we just walk in, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that might be because we decide to eat at 845, because we have drink time, then we have nap time, then we wake up for dinner. But I mean, the first night was a mess, but it's like that in all ships. Celebrity can handle a crowd. You've not sailed on Virgin. Virgin has no clue how to handle the number of people they have on board. Hmm. Their casino is too packed. Their shows are too packed. You have to make a reservation for every show. Wow. And yes, you were on a lure. You know you have to do that on a lure, but you can generally also just walk in on a lure. The reservations is kind of a... I went on a Thanksgiving week and there, there were 6,000 people on Allure. Were you able to see everything you wanted to? I, I was. You know what ship I'm really looking forward to though is the Norwegian Bliss. I've heard that that one was designed specifically for Alaska. I know, yeah, I've heard. I'm doing an Alaska girls cruise um, in, in, I guess, April 2024. So there's something we didn't really talk about yet. We kind of alluded to it, but the dining room, the main dining room feelings on it. Let's go over there real quick, then I'm going to come back here. Um, what are your feelings as a, look, again, food and me and celebrity, I'm probably not the best person to judge because I ate it for seven years. Like, I think that's a fair statement for me to make, don't you? The if food you, was yeah. fine. I wasn't super impressed with it. Um, I thought there were maybe some weird choices too. There were not as many things I was excited about as how I feel on either an MSC or a Norwegian cruise. Really? Yeah. Now, here's the question. Because oh. again, oh, I have one more thing. Please. Lobster night. 
This is the first cruise I've ever been on where on lobster night, if you wanted a second lobster, they charged you about $20. Oh, you asked, I remember yes. that. Yes. Uh, so this is the main dining room here. They do have a giant wine tower, which we'll, we'll get to, we'll walk to. I'll tell you, but here's, 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 I want to get, you didn't make it to the comedian on the first night of the cruise. Mm -hmm. I think you passed out again on the first night. I always drink you way too hard on the first night, and you're like, ah. Yeah, and I was on Switzerland time. Oh, so. that's right. You were on the Swiss time. Yes. From the Swiss time piece, from the sure cruise ship shop. Mm -hmm. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, the first from night, Switzerland. Literally, the second night, the first joke the comedian makes is how shitty Carnival is. Mm -hmm. You were on Horizon with me six weeks ago. Yes. Horizon was the last cruise ship you were on before this, correct? Yes. Compare the... <laughs> We avoided the dining room a lot on the rides. Remember that? Because we had other options and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Casino was buying stuff and everything like that. We avoided the dining room. But when we went to the dining room, would you say that the carnival dining room is at least equal to this dining room? Oh, yeah. But 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 carnival's trash. You know, I, I don't like that stigma. The other, look, carnival's comedians, you know what carnival's comedians don't do? They don't directly trash other lines. Because they would love to, you know, you know who Carnival's comedians would trash? Hmm. Holland America for people being old. Who owns Holland America? Carnival. Yeah. So, you know, Carnival's comedians don't trash anybody. Every single celebrity cruise I have ever been on, as both a guest, crew member, everything, they've all shat on Carnival. Hmm. And I think that for the price, you know that you can get an inside cabin on this same itinerary on a Carnival cruise for half the price of this cruise. You're definitely paying a premium here, a premium to be with other people <laughs> like you that want a tamer cruise with no children around. But, but you, you understand if you sail in January or February on any cruise ship, you're not gonna have kids there. There's always you, people that pull their kids out. But there's not enough to matter. Uh, why, why I went in the dining room, I wanna talk about one other thing. Celebrity had a wine tower in there. And they, they try and be all bougie and say they're all fancy and shit like that and higher end premium. I wanted a Moscato. Remember I wanted a Moscato at dinner the other night? What would they say? That they didn't have Moscato in the dining room. Fuck is that? They also had a wine on the menu that you asked for and then... For lunch. And they said they haven't had that wine in over 10 years. That was a printed menu. There's a lot of problems here. Now, have you noticed that little screen by guest services? It shows you how long the people have worked there. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anybody who's worked here more than two years. Yeah. That's a little scary. I noticed a lot of one years, yeah. There's a lot of one years, a lot of brand new people. Um, but I, I wanna, I'm gonna come in here. This is, this is Cellar Masters. This is the actual fancy wine bar. And you know what, this is one of the few places on this ship that I actually appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like to get a Moscato. Would you like to try a glass of something before we kind of, uh, we still have to go to the martini bar and the molecular bar, but then we get to kind of, not molecular bar, the world class bar. And then we get to wrap it up. But I want a Moscato. And you know what I learned in the dining room? This yes. is the only place that I can get my Moscato. I'll probably get a white wine or something. So um, just remember, well, we, 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 we have to finish our martini, our martini drinks, but we'll do that in a few minutes. So uh, I'll see you on Moscato from now. All right, so we are in Cellar Masters, which is right outside of the dining room, uh, which is where their wine should come from, but don't, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Um, I had some of the last bottle of Moscato on board the ship, and Kirsten, Kirsten was looking at this menu. All right, can I tell a story? Kirsten's looking at this menu, and she's like, oh, look, there's a section called Interesting Reds, and it says Malbec. And what did I say as soon as you saw it? You said, they're not going to have that because it was listed under the interesting section. And so, of course, why would they actually have it? But I went ahead and ordered it. And who was right? You were. I didn't do any research before. But they did make another, another suggestion to me, and, um, and it's delicious as well. I mean, look, I, I can't, I'm not pooping on the crew members. They're doing what they can. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of organizational problems here, and I think there's a lot of problems that are... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Trying to keep their older clientele happy, 
which are not opening this up as much to a younger clientele. Uh, this is not something we've talked about yet, but you remember when we were at the uh, World Class Bar mm-hmm. the other day? And we had a group of young people that were told that they needed to quiet down in the dining room. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. They were a little too rambunctious and they were telling now, us about it. Now, here's what's funny. Since the second night of the cruise, we've always been sat in the same corner, have we not? They have put us in the corner. Where don't you put baby? In the corner, in the bathtub. Corner. You don't know that phrase? Love a baby in the corner? I guess not. It's like truffle butter. Or two girls with cup. Don't put baby in the corner. No, seriously. I feel like if we go back to our guest tonight, look, our waiter's great. I have nothing bad. You actually think he's funny. It's good. And, uh, we talked about his, our waiter earlier. Who does the button? Does he sing in the morning? Or he carries around coffee, and he is just I'm allergic ready. To coffee. I'm sorry. He's he's just ready to give everybody coffee in the morning and ready to make sure you have your seat at night. Oh damn it! You try that one. Oh damn, that's good. That's very good. That could get dangerous. Yeah. I might need to help have a second glass of this one. Um, but, I mean, I feel like as young people, we've been segregated and regulated away from the other clientele. I'm being serious. Like, I have never felt... I think that they see the guy with the captain hat coming, and they're like, that's the loud one, let's put him in the corner. That's not very nice. I think that's what's happening. That doesn't happen on Carnival. Because there's a lot of loud ones. But you are the king of loud ones here. So, but you believe it's right? Um, I guess that's I, the question. Um, Can I only drink from the back water fountain? She don't want to answer that question. I believe that I've been segregated on this I show. think that you have a check mark next to your name that says nuisance and that they put you in the nuisance corner. So I can guarantee you I don't because I had someone check that the other day for me. But my, my parents had me tested to see if I was crazy and I wasn't. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like a Sheldon quote. I'm not a nuisance. Now, I, I, I do know that these cruise lines watch people who make videos about them and stuff like that. And they do make notations. I found notations on Carnival. I found those kinds of things. But I'll tell you, my last section of videos was very positive. Mm -hmm. Now, you know why there's no videos that anybody's seen up until now? Because of the internet. The internet is so garbage. I've not been able to upload more than a one minute short. It's entire cruise. But, But when they can watch those longer videos, which I'm sure by the time they're seeing this, they'll be up, the Sunset Bar and the Martini Bar were my two favorite long-form videos on this cruise. I agree with you. I also like the, the Sky Lounge. I think mean, here's the thing. <laughs> Again, I feel like I'm wrapping this up, but we still have two more bars to go to, uh, two more places we got to go to and talk about. I think if you know how to make the best of a situation, it's not that bad. Kirsten knew I was in a bad mood with what happened to the casino, but you know what I did? I continued coming up with content. I continued coming up with other bars for us to do content in and stuff like that. And kind of kept myself distracted. I'll be honest with you, you're watching this right now, and I don't usually break the third wall. You know breaking the third wall, right? Like The fourth wall? The fourth wall? Is that when you're like talking directly to the audience? Yes. Yes. If I didn't have content to make for you, the fourth wall, this would be a really shitty cruise for me because I, you know I like the casino. Mm-hmm. I haven't been to the casino in four days. Yeah, he hasn't. This is weird. What? It's weird. Like last night she was trying to fall asleep because I like to snore. And I was like, I'm going to go up to the X Club and watch Five Nights at Freddy's. I have to put my earplugs in and fall asleep myself before you try to sleep. And then I have to hope to stay asleep until I'm ready to wake up. Because once you're a snoring. I'm a bear. But not the type of bear that originally sailed on this cruise. Okay, hold on. One, one more story while we're drinking. One more story while we're drinking. Now, we've talked about gay cruises. We've talked about swinger cruises. But you know what we've yet, not yet talked about? 
that happened on this ship too. Oh jeez. A nude cruise. Mm. Now, do you think a nude cruise is the type of people that you want to see naked? No, but I've also been to Caliente and um, the views were nicer than I expected there. What is Caliente? Tell the, <coughs> tell the audience. Caliente is uh, near the Tampa area. I've, I've never actually driven there <coughs> myself, but... Um, oh, now we're just talking to ourselves. Go ahead. It's expensive for just a gentleman, but if you have a lady friend to go with you, then usually it's a lot less. Okay. And they have pools there, and they have restaurants and areas where people can play music and stuff like that. But it is fully, fully nude, and there are no cameras allowed. Also, uh, sexual activities happening by the pool area. Oh, so it's, it's a naked and swingers thing? It's a, um, it's a get naked and enjoy yourself place. Not on this ship called Caliente. I've been a couple of times. So here's my main question for you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pose this question to you. And then we will, uh, then, then, then we'll move on to the next bar, preferably for them. We're going to finish our drinks in a reasonable time frame. Then we have the martini bar and the world-class bar to go to. We should probably go to world-class first in a few minutes. Uh, and then we'll, we'll finish the martini because that's where we failed, isn't it? The one drinking challenge we failed at is a martini. And we can't let that failure happen, can we? Nope. We don't have to have all the drinks again. We just have to finish what's not on the list. I think that's fair, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, so here's the question I posed you. So when they're walking around naked on a nude cruise, right? They have to bring a towel when they sit down. But I, I, I riddle you this, and I will not tell you the answer to this riddle when I cut the video, because that's no fun. On a nude cruise, how do you know when it's formal night? I will see you at the World Class Bar to answer that very question. So we are at the World Class Bar. I have my Moscato to finish real quick. I finished my mall back, and we've got an For some apple reason, pie. Wait, can, I, can I talk about what's going on behind us real quick? Sure. There's like a giant clusterfuck of people waiting to get into the gift shop. It's like they were a mile literally long. Like, they were literally like, oh my god, look at this. Kirsten, you've gone on Norwegian, which is thought of as a less classy ship than this. I'm just, I, I don't agree with it. I'm just talking about the actual advertising. You go on Carnival, which they make fun of for people being like cattle. And then, hey, look, guys. Real evidence. I thought this was the dinner line or something. What the fuck but are these I people waiting for? I think that they're probably going to get like a glass of champagne and look at I some really effy need jewelry or something. What the eff? What the? What, what the eff is going on here? What the eff? I'm going to pull it up and see. But do you want to tell them about these drinks? You might want to. They, these are complex drinks. It's not like we could be like. Moscato! Yeah, we, we did a whole review here, and these are our top two drinks. One is drinkable only by me, because it's a little too strong for Kirsten. And the other one is probably going to be drank by me, because it's a little too strong for Kirsten. Uh, this okay. is... What, do you give your opinion this, on this? This is the American <clears throat> Pie Cocktail with Bullet Bourbon, the bold and spicy complexity of Bullet Bourbon, Frontier Whiskey, and warmth of <clears throat> Apple Cider with a brown sugar best describes this cocktail as a symbol of prosperity celebrating all things as American as apple pie. And there's a little apple on, on the and top. And he lit it on fire. And he lit it on fire and it smells so good. You wanna taste it? And this is, that's what he said. And, and this is the best smelling drink on the whole ship. I think the orange marmalade is still the best one. Smelling? That's a cock. No, best tasting. Yeah, this is the best smelling. You haven't tasted it yet. And this is, I did the other day. I will again. Ooh, that is a strong drink, but it is, it is okay. It is, it is good. Like it. Oh, and it's got a girthy cube too. That's a girthy one. Oh, what the, what the fuck is going on behind us? I need to ask somebody. I've checked the daily program. I genu genuinely don't know what's going on. You want me to go on. ask real quick? 
Okay, I'll, I'll do the. Can you leave okay. your mic? I just don't need a whole side conversation coming on the mic. I might have hit a button. That's fine. You're just recording. Um, Kirsten's gonna go figure out what the fuck these people are in line for. Um, because it's not on the daily program, it's not in the app, it's nowhere. Um, the other drink we've got is the Celebrity Number 10, which, uh, this is the world-class bar. It's actually from Diageo. It's the Tankery Number 10. Here we go. Some second chance raffle bullshit. It's the last charm. Tell, tell the microphone. It's the last charm. All right, so let's, we're ready for inside baseball, Kirsten? Yeah. I'm going to tell you some inside baseball. You're going to like inside baseball. All right. Okay. I shouldn't reveal what I'm about to reveal. Um, you should do a little, little drink in there. Let's see if that one's any good. I need to drink some of this before I say what I'm about to say. That's really drinkable. Yeah. So you like that one? What's in there? Creme de... Celebrity number 10, Tanqueray number 10 Gin. Be the star of your own show as you luxuriate in this refreshing cocktail made with Tanqueray number 10 Gin. Fresh raspberries, lemon juice, creme de la violet, and a dash of bitters. Serve tall with a splash of ginger ale to finish off with a touch of sparkle. I mean, there's no glitter in it. I'm, I'm not forgetting what I said, but me and Rick, <coughs> me and Rick in uh, Key West, like two weeks ago, we had a glitter drink, and we shat glitter for the next week. Let's talk about what's going on behind us, because I think it's very interesting. And it's something you might not know, and I'm cool educating everybody, all right? I am going to leave out some details here that could legally get me in some trouble. No, no. I know some stuff I shouldn't say. Okay. So before COVID, the illness, whatever we want to call it, before COVID, um, remember they used to have the port and shopping guides on the ship? Mm -hmm. They were actually from a third party company. Uh, Celebrity and Royal Caribbean used a company called Royal Media Partners. Some of the other ships used different things like that. Problem was, remember during COVID, ships went out of business for like two years. So all those companies went belly up. So here's the genius. Now, they let the gift shops run the port and shopping program. It's the same scam both on and off the ship. You remember how they always used to be in competition? They'd be like, oh, go out to Effie, go out to Diamonds International, go out to all those. Yeah, go out and get your Mark Henry Alexandrite ring and go get your Tanzanite. I'm a cruise girl, can you tell? You should have been a port and shopping guide. You can still be a port and shopping guy, I'm just saying. But wait, there's more. Walk into any Caraloha and say, Caraloha! Yes. They'll give you a, they'll give you, no, no I'm, I'm being dead serious it's right now. It's your only color changing so, shirt. So the way the business used to no, work. No, it's Del Sol. Yeah, same company, <laughs> same fucking thing. It's all owned by Diamonds International. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, oh I sh shouldn't have said that out loud. Uh, yeah. Whatever. All this shit is now owned by Diamonds International. And F, it's all the same trash now, both on and off the ship. So they try and designate it enough so you think they're still in competition with each other. But after COVID, Port and Shopping Guide and people on the shore are now working together. Now, before COVID, it was kind of interesting because what would happen is if the gift shops didn't have something, this was done very quietly, but if the gift shops didn't have something, they'd refer you to the Port and Shopping Guide. But there was an understanding after the last day of the cruise. Have you ever used the Port and Shopping Guide on a cruise before? No. No, no. But you understand the scheme or you don't understand how it works? You like go to a show, they teach you how to shop, they give you a map, it's got the but same. But there's a scheme you're missing. It's got the same places, it's not about the every map. stop. It's about the VIP request card. Oh yeah, and you have to ask for the manager and tell them what ship but you're on. But do you on. know why they do that card? Commission stuff? It's commission stuff, but it's also so they know exactly what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And the shops make a quiet agreement with the Port and Shopping Guide. This is before COVID. Now that it's all the same clusterfuck. They made an agreement with the Port and Shopping Guide that if they didn't sell something, they would pass that customer to the Port and Shopping Guide. But I know what you're saying. What do the shops get out of it, right? Yeah. After we were in Cozumel yesterday, last night after we left Cozumel, 
the Port and Shopping Guide gave all their VIP request forms to the gift shops. So the gift shops now know what people are looking for that they couldn't find in port. Hmm. Weird. Another scam they used to do. They used to tell you to get some free jewelry cleaning or register your jewelry. Do you know why they wanted you to come register your purchase with the Port and Shopping Guide? So they know what you have. Info. It's not only that. It's because they're making sure that their vendors are being honest. If you come and you bring something that you bought at Diamonds International, and Diamonds International didn't pay out a commission on that, they want to know. Hmm. You understand? So it's like you're a secret message carrier and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. That's all this jewelry cleaning, jewelry registration, stuff like that. Get your new stuff together. Did you just learn something in the last few minutes about port and shopping and all that? Yeah. So you remember how they used to have you chase around for the fucking charm in port, right? There's collect the charm stuff. I never do any no, of that no. garbage. Now, they brought it on the ship. People are in line for garbage. It's pretty garbage on this ship, though. They gave every lady, I think it was the first or second night, a little, a little ring that you wear around your neck, and it's got like a little glass thingy. And then they tell you to come to different, at different times to different places to pick up a charm. You put the charm in the necklace and it's all pretty. I mean, it is pretty, but it's worthless garbage. It reminds me of my exes. Uh, so we got there's, there's a lot on ships that's garbage though. Like all of this, analyze your footprint and do your like wrinkle thing. And What's my favorite garbage on the ship? Oh geez, where do I begin? I don't know. You know I have one favorite. The casino? Overall, my favorite garbage on all the ships. Oh, the garbage place, uh, Park West? Yeah! The garbage room. The garbage room. If you go on a cruise, I don't care what cruise it is, every cruise, every cruise Not line, entirely true. Every MSC, cruise MS, I've been on. MSC doesn't have Park West. Really? MSC, Maybe that's part of why I like them. MSC does not, you're MSC sells this, art, but they're third party vendor. Like there's no third party in MSC, it's all first party. You're gonna see Park West on like every cruise you go on for the most part, and it's gonna be a lot of Goddard and some, um, Who's other people? I don't Peter know. Max. Peter, oh, Peter Max. Thomas Brit Kincaid. Let's Brito. talk about, let's Thomas. talk about the painter of light. He puts the ends in for Nanette. Yes. How many and, ends and, are there? And, and you know what? Just, just to go after white girls, we are going to say that Thomas Kincaid has done some special limited edition work for Disney. Now, limited edition for Disney. Yes. We must go after the white girls. So, the White Coast love Disney. I'm not gonna lie, I have eight Thomas Kincaid Disney puzzles at home. Really? Yeah. I read her like a fucking book. <laughs> We've never talked about this before. Never. 20 years I've known her. I don't think I've ever said the word Thomas Kincaid to you. No. But just right now on video. I read that white girl like a fucking I'll, book. I'll show them to you next time, next no. time you visit. All the Thomas, no. all the... Don't show me your garbage. <laughs> I don't need, wait, pu puzzles or paintings? Puzzles. They're puzzles of his paintings and they're of the different Disney scenes with okay, different Okay, I think it was like 20 bucks, right? Oh yeah, and it was a box that had four inside. So I have two boxes of four. <laughs> different? So I have eight total. Yeah, of course. So he's the painter of light. Yes. We got two more stops. I'm gonna finish these bold drinks because Kirsten does not need. Oh, maybe she'll maybe just stay I'll have a little more. I got a tiny cabin. But cubby. we need to talk about where we're going next. Okay, we've got one more stop before the cabin. The cabin's where I'm gonna show you guys the cabin. Kirsten's gonna show you the giant bathroom. And then I think we're both gonna get a horizontal but in separate beds. Um, separate beds. Separate but equal. But mine's more equal because I've taken over the sofa too. <laughs> he has. I, I, I believe in eminent domain. There's a land across this ocean we're going to see. They cleared the line. They gave them all their bullshit. Charms we can see. Said land homie hardies, your charms they've arrived. That's a deep cut. That's actually pretty impressive that I'm coming with this. And we couldn't believe nearly all had survived. But we found one by guest services that we had to poke. And it seems like on his last drink he had choked. 
We call him a dead man with four more drawers there. If it's not a transatlantic, nobody would care. But then we came across a fifth dead body, and the garbage room was the place it should be. You missed your calling as a composer. So land ho me hearties, it's glad we've arrived. There's and, more. Huh? <laughs> I'm doing American Adventure, you know that. That was an American Adventure deep cut. As long as we get back to Miami, and most have survived. I think we're going to Fort Lauderdale. I guess Shut it up. doesn't rhyme for the song. Okay. We're going to go have some martinis. Because uh, we didn't finish. I like Kanye. I like Kanye. Kanye go, I'm going to let, let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. That was T Swift, right? Yeah. I'm going to let you finish, but like, there's three martinis we missed because we got way too drunk in the martini bar. So we have to try. Some of us fall asleep. Some of us danced. After licking the bar. <laughs> My tongue still kind of hurts. You'll survive. Oh. Oh. I'm not singing again. <laughs> I have survived. Yes, I lick it, lick it on the bars. You know I stay alive. I got all my charms from here. I got all my charms from there. Oh. I will survive? I guess so. We'll see you in the martini bar. All right, so, Kirsten, we failed. There were four drinks to the martini bar. We did not drink the other day because I licked the bar. You did a go-go dance in the corner. Then we talked about how we're not together yet. We're never going to be together. Sorry. Um, we are never, ever, ever going to get together. Wait. Back to get together. Yeah, I, I didn't say that. But something we didn't talk about. <laughs> That's the so, song, though. I know. I know. But I was making a Taylor Swift analogy. So, hey, we were at the Cellar Masters, and we were talking about uh, Naked Cruises, weren't we? Yes. And I got distracted by the charm bracelets the last place yeah so um how do you know i did tell you already i spoiled it god damn it uh, how do you know it's formal night on a nude cruise they took a black ta uh, towel wow. a black towel in the crack whoa it's not talking of crack what? Why are you assuming that there's crack involved? No, you put it in your crack. How no. else are you going to carry a towel when you're naked? No, you just carry it over your arm. Oh, oh okay. I was going to put it in my crack, but... The know. problem was, the white ones got shit stains. So then they, then they got blue hunts. And then, how you know what's formal night is the company that runs it, which I don't know who does the naked cruises. Bliss is a swinger cruises. They might also do swinger naked cruises. But yes, they do black towel. There's just, it's, it's a very simple punchline, Kirsten. It's also funny, because it's true. But we've got two drinks. Now, I made a modification to a drink, so it doesn't get to win number one, two, or three, so the highest it can go is four. You agree? Because I made a modification to it. Mm -hmm. So if we'd like it, it gets to go to number four, but that's the highest it can go. I will tell you the modification, but let's go with the unmodified drink. This is Bananas Foster, absolute, va absolute vanilla, banana liqueur, caramel syrup, and cream. I think we had this on the first night of the cruise. <coughs> Although it looked a little different. If you like banana and candy, this would be a good option. So like I had, oh wait, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. This is my brain working a little slow. Like I had these bananas with ice cream last night, remember? And then I realized that that's actually what bananas foster is. So uh, I did like that last night. Yeah, that was a really stupid statement. I've been drinking as well. This, this is the most drinking I've done on a ship tour. You're not wrong. This ship tour is gonna be like three hours, but it's okay. People watch these. Hi. Hi. To those of you that have made it two and a half hours into this disaster, welcome aboard. Um, that's a good drink. Now, where does it belong? <coughs> Something's giving me like number five vibes there. Let's talk about what's before it. If we give it number five. Um, 
Yeah, right before cucumber. <laughs> That's a good spot, yeah, because I, I love the passion fruit, the basil aid, and the lychee. Oh, that lychee ball in my mouth, it was awesome. Okay. All right, let's talk about this next one. All right, I have an aversion slash allergen to coconut unless it is artificial and in a pina colada. But I also like coconut water, but I should, why am I saying that out loud? Uh, I just, shaved coconut and me gets my gag reflex. So I made a slight modification. It was very hard to explain this modification, um, but this should be, do you get to try it first? Try to try it first. You can try it. Okay, I'm gonna let you know if it's close to what it should be. Like This is your Frankenstein, go yeah. ahead. This should be tasting like an orange creamsicle. Should be. Uh, it is orange juice and vanilla vodka. It is two ingredients. It took way too long to explain that to the guy how to make it. I'm like, you do this and you do that, but okay. I'm playing with the snow on the bar because there, there is um, a layer of like frost on the bar here at the martini bar. Yeah, she's playing with the snow because you see, look, Kirsten, let's be honest. Look at the martini bar here. Over three quarters of these people, you know what they're going back to tomorrow night? The cold. The snow. And we're going to Miami and Tampa. Uh, it's like four degrees cooler in Tampa than it is in Miami. And we're going to a renaissance festival and a drag show, which I think the person's actually a woman tomorrow. Not really sure. Uh, I'm up for it. Uh, and so yeah, there's the, there's the ice bar. If you're, if you're fortunate enough, if, if you really dig it, I think, I think, maybe we'll try this by the next drink. I think you can make a snowball. No. Is that no. a challenge? No, I'm gonna respect the bar and I'm gonna leave the snow alone, except for right in front of me, I'm gonna scratch it up. So try this, it's not great. I think I'm just gonna disqualify it from the menu. It smells good. It does, it just doesn't have enough of the vanilla. Like a screwdriver. Ooh. It should be like a cream soup. Should be a little more vanilla. They made that pretty intense. Ooh. You know, I noticed on this ship too, I got a mimosa one morning when you had not woken up yet. Wait. It had every the, morning. It had the highest champagne like champagne to orange juice ratio. So it was just, it was, it, it was, was heavy on the champagne. It was champagne with a drop of orange juice? Yes, and it looked very champagne-y. But was it good champagne or Chateau de Cajue? No, it was pretty good. And so it was not Chateau de Cajue? Pretty good, but it made me a little more tipsy than I wanted for like 7.35 in the morning. You know what that sounds like to me? personal problem mm. yeah so we are gonna finish this one Kirsten I kind of agree with you you're gonna say what do I have to agree with you on what? I think I, I am going to be averse to it okay but I will finish this one and that one I really truly think oh. that you need to order the coconut one so we can rank it okay I can do coconut it quieted down team here. coconut so Kirsten is going to try the coconut cream teeny so we can rank it. And I am going to get the toffee apple and then we will finish with what my mother always says I am. A special... Rotund. <laughs> you rubbed your belly. You know what's funny? I'm going to read you something out loud now. You know what's really funny? You busted a button last time we were here. And then I was telling you a story in the cabin and you were fiddling around in your suitcase and pulling out your button repairer that you carry with you as one of your 10,000 gadgets and gizmos aplenty. I've got who's it's and what's not galore. You want uh, SD cards? He's I got 10,000. I, I was gonna say I got plenty. <laughs> but it's pretty funny, my, my mom said something in music. Uh, my mom goes, y'all would appreciate this. So the music watched like 10 hours of us bullshitting so far this cruise. Y'all would appreciate this. She goes, 
How's your friend? She's a tough cookie. Threw you right out of the front seat. That's the type of single one you need to meet. <laughs> I haven't even shown that to Kirsten yet. That's why my mom sent me. She goes, put you in your place. <laughs> That's literally what my mom said. It's very hard to do. No, you see, you see that? It's like, I see it. <clears throat> I was like, damn, mom. Your mom so, likes me. What can I say? I, I guess so. I'm a girl you can bring home to your mother. I mean, the last one, her son killed her ex. Oh, okay, well, bye. We'll see you in the next drink. All right, so I would love to say we have our last two drinks, but we had to order one because Kirsten needs to rank the coconut cream teeny. I might take the tiniest sip. This is a pretty easy drink to drink. And if you like if you like coconut, it would be a good one. Wait, is there any pineapple in there or no? It's no. pure coconut. I think it's so it's coconut. Not like if you like pina coladas. No. It's very coconutty and it's very uh, smooth and creamy and easy to drink. I'm gonna have some banana. Okay, can I try a little bit? I have banana, should I need to rinse my mouth out? I'm listening to Journey. Nope. That would be at the absolute bottom of my list, Kirsten. Well, where would you rank it? Somewhere in the middle. Under Banana Foster? Oh, yeah. Under Espresso? Yeah. I think above Cosmopolitan is where it can be. Okay. Because I'm not a fan of uh, cranberry, so. Uh, I'm okay with that. Coconut. What the hell are you doing? You're dancing again. Did you know that heart. Journey, this Don't Stop Believing, that's like the number one piano bar song. And there's no, no piano need. bar here, but they're playing it live in the lobby. Shut your mouth. What, you think it's Sweet Caroline? Well, uh, brown no. eyed girl. Piano man. Yeah, it's not the piano bar anthem. It's that's the second one. It's journey. It's journey. I don't like to say comment below, but is it journey or piano man? Piano bar anthem. I think she's much too drunk to actually know what it is. No. All right, so we have another drink. We'll, we'll work on these, but I think this is a contender, this next one. I really think it's a contender for number one, all right? We didn't have it the other night because I got way too drunk. I fell asleep at the bar, and then he had to fix a button. Did I know what? Fix a button. I did. I was going to say, you're going to have to fix another button, no, but not. the button's there. It's just unbuttoned. <laughs> Ready for action. Oh. This one, <coughs> toffee apple. It has Tito's, butterscotch schnapps, and apple juice. That smells so good. I think it's number one. In best smelling? Still the other bar with the no, no. toasted Here. apple is best Here. smelling. That's a very good drink. I really like that. And it's completely clear. Just a little, little opaque. Looks a little bit like the Carnival Paradise. Hmm. That means it looks a little bit like piss. You understand that, right? Uh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, uh, Kirsten, I'm torn. I'm torn. Can I tell you I'm torn? Why do I mean I'm torn? Okay, here's my problem, all right? <clears throat> I think, and I don't do this ever, what well, I'm about to say, all right? Oh, geez. Hold on. 
She's dancing. I don't think you're gonna disagree with this, but I've never actually done this before, all right? I think the top three drinks we have here are so varied in their flavors. Are you gonna put ties? Are you I'm gonna like... give three first prizes. Ooh. Because, here's the thing, the passion fruit is, what the fuck is that thing? That is like if you melted a thousand blue popsicles into a martini cup. All right. like, I'm hiccuping almost. All right, so I like the passion fruit. I think you like the passion fruit too. I did. And we both liked the lemon basil. Yeah. And we liked the toffee apple. Yeah. But I think we liked them all for different reasons. Yeah. So they have to be tied for first place. I don't believe in this shit. You don't believe in this shit? I don't believe you, in ties. But you made your own rules. All right. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We got one more round after this. I'm going to finish this one. I want to hold on to this. Coconut's not really in the running for anything. I'm going to order a lemon basil aid. All right? So I'm going to get a lemon basil aid. And then I'm also going to get the uh, snowflake. I just love how the ship tour turned into Martini Bar Part 2. Are you against it? I just want my nap before dinner. She just wants to get horizontal. Horizontal. Okay. I need, this is a contender for top three. I might have to order all top three and then rank them. Right now, you're gonna hate me. I'll be napping. Okay, we'll see. Maybe. I don't know. We'll be back. All right. So, uh, so Kirsten, we are on the last drink of this tour. It is the uh, Snowflake Martini. I've had it a few times. You're a fan of white chocolate. I am a fan of white chocolate. I had this a couple times over this cruise and I was not a fan. I don't know if I just drank too much that night or anything like that. I'm okay now. I think before we leave this bar, we're going to blow. Let's see where we're at. Mm -hmm. Kirsten says, I am destroying the bar here. He's I am not. He's destroying it. No. I am, I it's am healthy. It's covered in snow, but he has to get all the snow. I must collect all the snow okay so which have you tasted this already or you've been like you've been coy about it i was just licking the rim okay i get it you were making a sex joke i'm cool with it give it a try i was licking the rim kirsten doesn't know what i'm doing there's 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 a couple things i can do with a pile like this i can either uh I can snort it. Let's see. I mean, I have to like, I have to use my card. What? What? You don't like the cocaine joke, Kirsten? I find the cocaine joke pretty funny. But she's not a fan of the cocaine joke. Sorry. This. This is pretty, pretty good. Top three? Are we gonna fight for it? It might be top three. I don't know. I have to. I have to know what's top three. <laughs> what are you gonna do? on my eyelashes. What do you do? You I didn't want to mess up the hat. 
Did I just throw a snowball at you that I made from the martini bar? You did. I don't have enough snow to make another one. Here. No, you stop. No, people are going to slip. You stop. I was giving this to you. There's a tiny snowball. That actually hurt. <laughs> Tastes like tongue skin. Yeah. You can only lick the bar once per cruise. You know the good news? I got three more cruises booked. You're going to lick all three of those okay, wait. bars? Okay, so you need to know the top three, don't you? Yeah. All right. Richard, you know what? It's almost time to blow. It is. I want to blow before dinner. That's after she goes horizontal. That was a joke. Okay, where are we at? Um, They're wait. playing Prince now. Oh, hold on. Okay, so top three, passion fruit, lemon basil, toffee apple. I would put it right after toffee apple. Number four? Yeah, maybe before or after toffee apple. Let me Whatever taste it. Yes. No, 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 we're not being agreeable. Fuck that. We're not in a relationship. We don't have to be agreeable. We're in a relationship. It's just not a, it's not one of those tangled emotional relationships. It's a 20 year good friend college relationship. That, that doesn't help it. You know what was out when we were in college? What? You know what was out when we were in college? And relevant? The Adventurers Club. We're going to see it tomorrow. Like three guys from the Adventurers Club were at the Renaissance Festival we're going to tomorrow, but... No. No. Not what you were going for. I was going for Girls Gone Wild. That was relevant when we were in college. Someone tried to recruit me for that. Tell the camera. I, someone tried to recruit me for that when I was at University of Houston. But you know what? I graduated high school in three years instead of four years. And you were 17? I, I was only 17 and I, I declined. Kirsten could not show her titties on the Girls Gone Wild bus because she was only 17, right? Right. Were you a bigger girl then or no? I was a bigger girl. I weighed about 220, 230. I'm about 140 right now. Whenever you hear me say in these videos that, I've, that I have a tiny tummy, it's because I did gastric sleeve. I mean, for those people that have watched for three fucking hours, I mean, you laugh. You know that people actually do watch these videos. Like, I know it sounds insane, but I know my watch times. Um, okay, so we're putting that... Is your card just, like, standing by itself vertical on the bar? That's worth showing. I don't know what you did here. They call me David Copperfield. Do that. That's pretty impressive, isn't it, Kirsten? It is. How I did that trick? I, I don't know how I did that trick. You're, you're right. My card, Kirsten, I am so drunk. I don't know how my card is standing on its own. Do you? Sometimes things of mine stand on their own without me knowing why. I think that every fourth grade boy knows what you mean. What about fifth grade boys? They probably have that issue too. All right, so Snowflake, we're going right after the toffee apple. I'm not going to fight you there. No fights. You know, Kirsten, there's one thing that we haven't shown people yet. And I think it's also the most private place to wrap this up. Where is that? Our cabin. Are we going to show them where we lay horizontal? Yes. And there's about 12 inches between where we lay horizontal. I am not an African American. Therefore, I cannot do anything. What? What? <laughs> Most of the people that have at least 12 inches. 12 inches of space 
between the beds. It's where I sleep like a delicate princess and where you snore like, an like, like a hippo in labor. I was making a penis joke. I have to prepare for you to come to bed with my earplugs. I bought a big thing of earplugs. Why did you have to say earplugs? You should have just ended with, I have to prepare for you to come to bed. Yes. That would help. Like, that would help I my have, case. I have to prepare for <coughs> you to come to bed. There we go. Because of the girth, right? Because of the girth. My card is literally frozen to the bar. It is. In a vertical position. It is very erect. It's not girthy, <laughs> but it's erect. I have no clue how I did that. Legitimately have no clue how I did that. Because you're effing around. He's effing around. I, I, don't, I really don't know how the bar... So, we're going to go the room, and we are going to do a root cause analysis. Kirsten, are you familiar with that? Where, from business school, where you like, you ask all the whys of why, why this, why that. You find the root of the problem by asking why is something the way it is, and you look, look like, at all the symptoms. In real time, two hours ago, but in internet time, maybe like an hour and 20 minutes ago, uh, we literally ranked it at the bottom of our top 20 cruises. You can't, you can't turn it off yet. We have to blow. You're right. Okay, I will blow, but here's what I'm saying. In real time. I gotta blow too. In real Let time. Let me blow, Richard. Let me blow. You're not horizontal yet. You have to blow on your knees? I blow at all of these bars. Oh, yeah. Okay, so wait, hold on. No. We're gonna talk about what I have it. I have it. It's in my hand. My, my card. For some reason, my it's room still key. Vertical, vertical, vertical. It's still completely levitating. Vertical. They call me. Uh, they call me Richie Copperfield. Really? I mean, I call me Richie Copperfield. No pants, Copperfield. Right? No pants, Copperfield. Is that your porn name or something? Because I can make anything levitate. Um, I, I have licked this entire rim. I'm just going to finish this drink. You're fine. I, I mean, you know what she did? She marked that drink as her own. Mine. So you like the snowflake? I do. I love white chocolate. It's not too strong for you. It's borderline. But you know what? We, took, we did a ship tour. And we stopped at every bar along the way. Every bar we had already compared. We and missed it, one bar, but we're not going to it. The one in the Michaels no, area? The, we can't go there. The Jazzy Bar. No, I mean, we didn't stop there, but we went there. The There's Lobby no Bar? bar. The, the Lobby Bar. The Lobby Bar. But do they have special drinks? I mean, they can serve you a freaking uh, strawberry smash, a berry smash with a uh, mango in it. Remember that? Uh, yeah, I do remember that. What? I love mango, but not when I'm asking for that beautiful strawberry drink. We never got that beautiful strawberry drink, did we? No. I didn't even see the cup. The whole time, the, they had a really nice, erect looking cup for it. It was tall, girthy, erect. And Wait, what was I it? didn't even see it. It was on lunch today that we got our first frosted beer glass, right? Yes. On the last day, day but, seven. But, but given the fact that celebrity bills themselves as a more premium line, do you find this cruise any more premium than Norwegian, Carnival, MSC? Not for anything that counts. Like, okay, they give you some little cheap earphones in the in the in the gym i give you that they, they've got a few more um they've got a few more juices in the um not the buffet. lobby the buffet you you know what i haven't mentioned yet though something about lawn club that that i forgot to mention earlier with lawn club you know what 
Oh yeah, when we I'm booked it. When we big, booked it. I'm on a big birthday person. May I have? Cruise. May I have a sip of your water just to, so I can blow? I am on a big birthday cruise, and we let Lawn Club know when we made the reservation that this is my birthday. I'm turning 39, or as Richard says, 40, because he only rounds up to the nearest 40. Don't wait. But, wait till you turn 41. Ah, uh, then I'm 80. Then we're going on Holland America. Great. How in America? So, um, we went to the lawn club. We had told them when we made the reservation that it was my birthday, and they didn't do anything. It took us 45 minutes to even get any food on the table. And it was only me that got food in 45 minutes. We ordered the spiked lemonade. We got four mojitos, and, and, you know, I don't really care because I cruise a lot, but if... If it had been like my actual birthday, this is my birthday cruise, if it had been my actual birthday and then they didn't acknowledge that it was my birthday, that would be upsetting. So it's worth, it's worth saying in the ship tour. Her name's no longer Kirsten, it's another name that starts with K. Kinky Mistress? <laughs> I was going with Karen. But uh, do me a fi finish your drink. I need you to wash your mouth out after. I, I do want to point out that uh, 14 minutes later, my card is still erect. It's still erect. I don't know how. Hey, Kirsten, let's ask you a question. Should I leave this card here? and see what happens if I've got an erection lasting longer than four hours. LOL, take your card. But the erection's lasting... It's time to blow. I will blow first. Rinse your mouth out. I finished my drink. Rinse your mouth out. Spit the, spit the water it's in there. It's the snowflake. You need to swallow or spit. I don't care. She's a swallower. I prefer to swallow. <clears throat> it's what everyone wants. All right, we're calculating. Then we're gonna go back to the cabin. We're gonna wrap this up. And Kristen will get a nap for like an hour. 0.09. That's not bad for what I drank. Lies, there's no way. I don't, I don't even get it. I don't even get it. What do you mean? I'm a big guy. You are a big guy. Six hours and 50. Oh, we gotta read the, your balance, speech, speech vision, vision, and, and reaction. Last time when we did that, I broke my car. May, May be impaired. impaired. But they didn't prescribe you melancholy. Oh, you're getting melancholy like a motherfucker. No, I think that this thing lies. Are you getting major memory loss? This, what are you getting? This, no. Five, four, three, two, one. Kirsten, are you sad this is your last blow of the cruise unless it errors out? I mean, 0.14. Oh, 0.14. Is that more than you? I don't remember. Much more. Really? Nine hours and 56 minutes until sober. You get melancholy. You, you may, may be, be experiencing melancholy. A lack of physical control and blurred, blurred oh. vision. I you didn't get, get melancholy. Whatever the hell that means. So now it's time to go back to the room. And Kirsten is going to talk about how big it is. Now, when I talk about how big it is, what do I specifically mean, Kirsten? The bathroom. She's an inside cabin girl. We're an inside cabin right now. Because I'm uh, a CPA, cheapest people alive. I mean, unless you work for a big four accounting firm that actually has full operations of this ship called Ernst & Young because celebrity couldn't manage it themselves. Oh, fuck. I should turn this off before I go any further. Um, We'll see you back in 7164. We can say that because we'll be gone before this post. So 7164, 
We're gonna show you what an inside cabin looks like, wrap everything up with a why, 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 why analysis, and Kirsten's going to continue to dance, because what the fuck. All right, so to finish this, we are on deck seven, near our cabin, and this is where we can talk about the things that we really don't want other people hearing. Now, Kirsten did get to look into the, uh, the show for a couple minutes on our way to the cabin. What were your thoughts on the show? Um, I saw some, some queen with some aerial whatevers. And it, like it was aerial, nice. the black little mermaid or the white little mermaid? <sighs> Which one? They are equally great, but this was aerial acrobatics. <laughs> and you know what? I think, that, I think that celebrity actually spends more money on their shows than what Carnival does. Because Carnival had everybody kind of sitting in like whatever and like singing, like sitting on. See, I think um, the worst shows, you're going to laugh. I think the worst shows are actually MSC. I think they have the worst production shows. Really? I, I think really that MSC think, is known for their entertainment. I think MSC has the worst entertainment in the industry. Mm -hmm. I really do. All mm -hmm. right. So we're back in the cabin, which means we can finally, I mean, Kirsten, have we not been talking freely the whole time? We talk freely. We can talk more freely. You'll see we've got our beds separated by at least one BBC. That is, that's a... Uh, the British Broadcasting Channel? Banana, banana something chocolate. Uh, yeah, at least one banana chocolate separates the beds. Uh, like my arm, like my whole arm right there. All right, do you want to show them the giant bathroom? Yeah. Kirsten, when she came onto this ship, for an inside cabin, I said, she said, wow. She said, wow. That is pretty big for an inside bathroom. Should it the big is. guy get in the shower and spin around? It's got a real glass shower door. Wait, hold on. Yes, it is glass. Ew. And it's got like this tile pretty stuff here. This is a pretty bathroom for a cruise ship. For especially for an inside cap. Yes. This is not a suite or anything like that. This, this is, is the nicest inside bathroom that I've ever seen. Okay. Cool. Let's talk about, you know what I like to talk about, Kristen? My audience really likes outlets. Okay. So we do have our uh, OnlyFans. Uh, I have an OnlyFans. And Kirsten has an OnlyFans. So ha, 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 ha. Well, you have two fans. What are these? Only fans. Thank you. Thank you. And look, our only fans are USB powered, so I can be like, only fans one. That was that one. Only fans two. Turn on our only fans, but I'm gonna turn them off for now. We've got uh, what do we have? We have two American plugs and one European plug. There are no Kirsten, have you found any other plugs here? Mm -mm. Uh, there are no USB plugs in this cabin. Newer ships than this. They've built like USB plugs into, even when they've like refreshed these newer ships, but I've not found any USB plugs. Now. They had them on Carnival though. When they refurbished the ships, they put in USB plugs, you're correct. Mm. Also, let me, let me be very clear. Horizon is a newer ship than this. The last ship we were on, it might not seem like it, because it smelled a little bit like piss. Uh, celebrities passengers are more likely to have a um, a catheter bag in them. Okay. So they don't smell like piss as much. Because mm. it's, it's all backed up in their catheter. Speaking of that, my next cruise, I'm going to have adopted father number one who has a pee bag so he does not have to get up to break the seal. Oh, wait, no, he does. The, the bag only works in the poop. That's, uh, that seems uh, somewhat efficient. So let's talk for a minute. Are you familiar with the whys? whys? Asking why. Root cause analysis. We've seen the cabin, and yes, look, that's my, that's my, uh... The clusterfuck of laundry shit. <laughs> that's also where, when electronics are lost, we have to toss all of that on the floor and then find, find the wide-angle lens or the whatever, whatever. Did I lose my room key right before we went to do this shift door? Yes. Is it somewhere in that fucking pile? But you pile? know what? I, you only replaced your room key twice on this cruise, and I replaced it three times. Why? Because you lost it? Yes. And you never told me? Yes, you were sleeping. I'm like Santa. 
Or you're like Santa, I know when you are sleeping. I know when you're awake. Okay. I replace the keys when you're sleeping. Can we talk about root cause analysis? Yes. Business school. Mm -hmm. We need to wrap this up. We did business school together. We did business school together. But then you went for an MBA. I did Master of Accountancy, but we had our undergrad business together. Correct. And they, they talked about something. I think it was a, you remember Dr. Stuart Van Alken? Remember him? Hmm. It was a crazy old dude. Not He's dead. A bell. He died. Let me see if I can find a picture of him. <laughs> no, 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 I'm dead serious. I think I'm Facebook friends with a dead guy. Probably. I think we all are. Stuart Van Alken. Um, but he talked about something specifically called root cause analysis. Oh, here he is. I think he's dead. I genuinely think he's dead. But I'm going to show you his picture. You remember him. He doesn't look like he was happy to have his picture taken there. Oh, that's his car. <laughs> that's him younger. Okay. But he taught. Anyways, this yeah, is more. There he's smiling. Do you in remember his car. him? Do you remember him? Nope. Was he from FGCU? He was from Gulf Coast. Hmm. You just found out. I remember him. And he taught root cause. You can show me he's dead. <laughs> Sorry. In awful. his car where he was apparently happy. He taught root cause analysis. Are you familiar with what root cause analysis is? You ask a bunch of why, you think of a problem, and you but, but, ask a bunch of why. Let, let, let's reverse back a little bit, okay? I said out of 20 cruises, this is number 18 for me. And you said it ranked near the bottom. You didn't give a number. What did you say? It's about 17, 18 for you. 15? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why? My worst cruise ever, though, was Costa in 2021. Right. Sorry. Tangent. Tangent. Root cause analysis. And I've led you here the entire time. And you just haven't seen it. And not only have I led you, I've led... That was Mo Booby. All of you. <laughs> I've led all of you here the entire time. Do you remember I talked about the gay cruise? Yes. Do you remember I talked about the swinger cruise? Uh-huh. That is why Celebrity failed. Because they were meant to be for gays and swingers? No. Because they thought they were meant for that. Why has celebrity tried to change their demographics so much? Well, because when they get themselves a... Well, okay, why is celebrity failing? Let's, we went a few whys ahead. Why is celebrity failing? And it is failing. You can, you can, you can Rochambeau me till the end of the day. Look at the guest service scores. Look at everything like that. Why? Well, because they have an older demographic. Okay? And an older demographic is dying off by the days. Kirsten, you met probably... Four or five people on this cruise that watched my carnival videos before. Probably even more than I'm, that. I'm underestimating. No, no, I'm saying not on this whole sailing. I'm talking about on this ship. Mm -hmm. We met some in port and stuff like that, but I'm saying on this ship that watched my carnival videos. Those people are willing to give celebrity a chance. They believe it's a higher end cruise line and things like that. Um, but the old people don't spend money. I talked to one earlier today that I've known they for many years. They want their free charms from Effie. Fuck yeah, they want their free charms from Effie. Fuck yeah, they want their free drinks and stuff like that. Now, why? Well, that's why again. Because it's symptomatic of celebrity catering them for many years. And when they complain, giving them things. Why? Well, because they could only get in certain demographics on this ship that spent money for charter cruises. You remember I told you about the gay cruise? Remember I told you about the nude cruise? I didn't tell you that I was actually writing a narrative the entire time to explain why this company has failed. Because here's what Lisa Lutoff Perlow, who was the ex-CEO of Celebrity, <coughs> and Captain Kate McHugh, who was the current captain on one of their ships, tried to do. They tried to get the people that come on their ships for gay cruises, for naked cruises, for swingers cruises. That's why I mentioned this all along the way. You've watched this? If you are a celebrity executive or board member, I have literally figured out your root cause of your problem. You have decided that you want to get the people that you get on for charters on all the time. But you know what you can't do? Hmm. Can you do that until the old people are gone? Old people only last so long. Can you? But here's the thing. We talked about this earlier. We were relegated to a corner. People were too loud. 
uh, they were relegated and told to shut up. You were told you can't curse in the casino. If you put a bunch of gay guys in the casino, you think you're going to tell them you can't curse? No. Because they curse like fucking... I love them. We're going to Wilton Banners tomorrow. You've never been. It's the gayest area in the world. Here's what happened. Here's where celebrity failed. They got a bunch of charters from gay, nude, lesbian, swingers, cruises. And they said, well, we can make our product work for all those people. And you know what they did? Hmm. They tried too hard. Hmm. We asked all the whys. You can't make your product work for all of them until all of them become your customers. Does that make sense? Because in the end of the day, if you're not filling a ship to 90% capacity, guess what you're not doing? Making money? Yeah. You're not making money. So if we're doing a root cause analysis, celebrity went too hard in making their charter customers their full-time customers. And they lost employees. They lost investors. They lost everyone like that. And that is my belief. You can choose to believe it. This is still my channel at the end of the day. You know, I'm not, I'm not being against you, but have I led you down that path for the last question mark number of hours? I've drank too much and need to be horizontal, but I know you're making a point right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was good. That's good. Uh, you ask all the whys and you get your answers. Please, I, I'm not a guy who generally goes, leave your comments below. But if you want to, and you think I'm wrong, the problem is... I'm going to lay horizontal. Okay, just don't get naked yet. I'm going to show her laying horizontal. Uh, Kirsten has decided to lay horizontal. But fortunately, you know what she still has on? A... Say microphone. Microphone! There we go. So we can still hear you when you're laying horizontal. This is Richard and... Kirsten! From the Celebrity Reflection with a review, overview... Going everywhere. I think the only thing we missed was the lobby bar. And Kirsten, what are we reminding you? That when you, something about no pants, when, when, oh. when you don't have any pants, the only thing left you have to lose is your shirt. Or for uh, Lisa Lutoff and, uh, and what's her name? Captain Kate McHugh. I guess if you go too hard on charters, the only thing you have left to lose is... Your brand. Yeah. Celebrities pretty fucked if they don't change course. That was Richard and Kirsten from the... Carnival Reflection. Carnival. carnival. What? No, that's what you always do. You call it carnival because you love carnival. Was that making carnival. fun of me? No. <laughs> from the celebrity <coughs> reflection. <coughs> Reminding you that when you wear no pants, the only thing you get left to lose is... Your shirt. Have a great one.